Jed, you, where'd you see that picture? Oh, come on, man. Where'd you, where'd you see, see it? it? Gentlemen, we're live. Okay, okay. We, we are live. live. Thank, Thank you, David, David for letting us know we're live. live. We, we love our David here. here. If you can find the Allen wrench. We've got a special guest here today, Chief Bitcoin Historian with CoinGeek. That's actually your title. Yes. And your entire Kurt. MO is Bitcoin, crypto. Uh, you worked as, at, a, as a, a fundamental analyst, analyst hedge, hedge fund, fund, private and foreign. foreign. So we, so got, we got, got a lot of stuff to talk about. about. You got strong opinions. You had some stuff to say about, to say about uh, Dorsey yesterday, yesterday with Twitter. Twitter. Yep. Yep. You even uh, said you got to get on Twitch, Twitch which is maybe we can talk about that. Um, but we got we got a lot to talk about. We got we got a speed run. I'll give you names of people in your world. I'm curious to know what your opinion is going to be on them. Some tells me you're not the kind of person that's going to be safe. Uh, we have a friend back there, a Mexican, Adam Sosnick. Manny Soto is in the house. We have a wager to see who's got better yeah. game. One of these days when you guys go out, i got to get the report on what happens. Our analyst, uh, Gerard, will go with you, yes. and he may just school both of you by the time it's over yeah. with. And then we have also my brother-in-law, Oi Sabet Imani. Siamak, Sabet Imani in the house. See ya, in the house. If you're in the Persian community, you know that last name. That is a legendary Bye. last name, yeah. Siamak Sabet Imani. I did see some videos see of his father, right by the way. He said that to me. His dad's a legend. 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 So today, for our yeah. viewers, if you're interested in crypto, listen up. Today's the day, right? Mm. I mean, this, we're going to go deep mm. on crypto. Mm. Get some crypto in your life. Yeah, so we got, we got a uh, lot of stuff attendees. to get into. So before we get into it, before we get into it, Kurt, why don't you tell everybody your background so people know. Sure. Uh, maybe skip the part about you and your wife, MMA, UFC, all that <laughs> stuff, but specific <laughs> yeah. to crypto. Uh, I, so 2012, I was, a, um, I was a business owner. I owned a printing company. Okay. I was also big into the sound money and the Fed community and all of that in Chicago. I had a guy come to me and say, hey, man, I need some posters printed. Can I pay you in Bitcoin? I said, I don't know what the hell Bitcoin is. Oh. He tells me, well, it's kind of like video game money. I said, okay, well, that, that's whatever. It was like a $50 job, so I was like, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Pay me in Bitcoin. Well, that brought me the, the first step down the rabbit hole, and uh, by the end of the next year, I was running a small mining operation and, and doing all kinds of things. So 2013 to 15, uh, I was big in the infrastructure space. I wanted to figure out, like, how does Bitcoin work? But By the how way, when he gave you that $50 Bitcoin, what was Bitcoin in 2012? God, 100 bucks? Yeah, yeah not, not even. I think it was a little less. Yeah. yeah. So, so almost like a full Bitcoin I, at 50 bucks, I, 75 bucks. If, if I recall, I got a little more than one Bitcoin, if I recall. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. For, for a little stack of posts. Today's yeah. what, 55K? Well, yeah, the, the, the only reason I know what price it was is because I bought Bitcoin in 2012. I told this story before. At a libertarian convention, a guy talked mm -hmm. about it. I was like, yeah, I love this. And the Fed, screw fiat currency. I bought 100 Bitcoin for 1,000 bucks. It went down <laughs> to 900 bucks next week. I was like, ah, this is a scam. And I pulled it all out. I lost 100 bucks. I owned... 10 big, I own 10 Bitcoin and 100 bucks each in 2012. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my Bitcoin story. Anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, lo long story short, got involved in, in infrastructure. I wanted to, um, I, was a, I was a big fan of using Bitcoin as cash, using it in the economy. I, I believed fully in disrupting business use cases. So okay. everybody wants to talk about the finance aspect, yeah. like hold, get rich, all, all of that. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, Okay, well, what what inefficient data silos and and all this different stuff is out mm -hmm, there that we can mm -hmm, disrupt? Mm -hmm. So for me, I was getting into development, like wallet development, and all yep. these different things. I, I I wanted to go that direction. And then, what I like to call the Bitcoin Civil War started around 2015. This talk about whether or not Bitcoin should be used as a business tool or whether it is just simply a savings or an investment technology. You said Bitcoin civil war. Absolutely. Okay, so who is going against who? So if it's north, north and south, south what's the, who's, so, who's yeah. the enemy here? The, who's going against the who? The most basic way to put it is small blockers versus big blockers. Okay. Uh, on the small blocker side, you have uh, Blockstream, Lightning Labs. Uh, they're, they're primarily funded by a group called Digital Currency Group, which is a incubator owned by MasterCard Ventures. And they believe that Bitcoin is a uh, an investment tool only. Buy it, hold it, that's it. If you want to use it, maybe use Lightning Network. Whether or not it works is is you know irrelevant because it's primarily an investment technology. On the big blocker side, uh, there's actually a couple factions of big blockers that all kind of hate each other too. But there's the the Bitcoin Cash community and mm -hmm. Bitcoin SV community. I'm I'm a Bitcoin SV guy. Um, that at the time was uh, Roger Ver. Uh, guys like Craig Wright, Bitcoin Unlimited. Um, in 2015, the big group was Bitcoin XT. So a lot of these people are like, hey, we'll just create a Bitcoin imp implementation that allows miners to to make a change uh, when whenever they feel like it. If there's more traffic, they can raise the block size and, and just go that direction. Mm -hmm. Like, let's, let's keep fees predictable. Let's use Bitcoin as cash. And that became an increasingly unpopular opinion. And, and the reason is, is because 
people just kept getting richer by doing nothing. And if you're getting rich doing nothing, what's your incentive to maybe rock the boat, to maybe pursue some other avenue? And I get that, but the problem is, is all the disruptive stuff happens when people actually disrupt business. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really what I want to see Bitcoin do. And, I, and it really hasn't done that yet. E- even all the other blockchains that exist today. It's because Ethereum is the one that's going to do it. N- no, it absolutely is not. <laughs> Ethereum oh, is it's going no, down. 100% not. Civil war on PBE. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so why, t- to me, here's my question. Maybe help us understand the mm-hmm. following for some folks that don't follow it. So, mm-hmm. uh, it, you know, in religion, you'll have... Um, uh, uh, Jews will say Christianity, you know, they're really Jews. Jesus was a Jew, so you guys kind of took it and came out with this NIV and then changed the whole thing up. Judaism and, 2.0. You know, right. it's really Judaism 2.0, sure. right? And then Christians will say, well, LDS, you know, you took a Joseph Smith from Vermont and you took this and you created LDS and you guys went and out of Chicago eventually ended up in Utah, Brigham yep. Young, et cetera, et cetera. No, Judaism Vista. Seven day, all this stuff that you hear about, right? Yep. Muslim, Baha'i. So, what, what it almost sounds like in the crypto community, there is religions, right? You got uh, folks like Pomp who will swear by Bitcoin and nothing else, like yep. literally nothing else. The other day I was on, uh, is it Natalie Brunel, who is a, a, a very eloquent? I was on her podcast and we were speaking. She is strictly Bitcoin, not Ethereum, not, not nothing else. And then there's guys that dabble on everything and diversify, and there's mm-hmm. guys that are, just can't stand Bitcoin. Why don't you explain to us what these different religions within crypto sure. are? Uh, first of all, I, I love the religious analogy. It's one that I use all the time. So it, it's often, you know, trying to figure out the Israel-Palestine issue, right? Like, we'll, we'll, we'll never see those two groups likely come to an agreement on, oh, okay, we all agree. This is all going to work. Not going to happen. But the thing with Bitcoin that people don't understand is that Bitcoin is capable of being everything to everyone. And, and that's really how it was designed. It was designed fundamentally to replace the internet. We don't have 10,000 internets. We have one internet. Yep. It is a fixed protocol that people can build on, in, above, around, but you know the internet's gonna be there. So you can build your business based on knowing that the internet is going to be the same in five years, in 10 years, whatever. The, or th- these are at least the assumptions that we make. The problem with all these different protocols, with Ethereum is a great example. Ethereum hard forks, basically once every year, has a very deep and fundamental protocol change, which means everybody needs to retool everything, everybody needs to reissue tokens, they need to reissue the the apps that they make, they need to reissue these smart contracts, basically breaks everything. And then at the end of the day, Ethereum is only really capable of about 15 transactions per second globally, which is nothing. This is essentially zero throughput. 15 transactions per second globally. Mm. Correct. Okay, got it. Visa, for example, is good for about 50,000. Per second. So, per second. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this. Does Ethereum have the ability to improve that? Or that's the limit? Like They claim to, uh, and they're about two and a half years behind on their roadmap saying that they absolutely will. But I, I, think it's a, I think it's a big meme. I think they want to continue to pump valuations. It's like Tesla. It's like, hey, man, these trucks are coming out you know, in, in 2019. No, mm-hmm. they're coming in 2020. Well, okay, it's 2021. We'll probably get them by 2023. But, again, but you look at Tesla's now a trillion dollar valuation. So, and but by the should way, they be? You, you have to know this. So from, <laughs> from my end, one thing you need to know about this group, I don't know about him, but mm-hmm. I'm, not, we're, I'm not tied to a group. I'm just simply asking a question sure. to get smarter, right? Mm-hmm. So to me, when you talk to the metaverse community or the uh, NFT community, They'll say, you know, I don't know, Ethereum's got 10 million coins. I don't know the exact number what it is, but give or take is what I hear. It's, it's actually en- endless. So, okay. so Ethereum is emitted constantly forever. So there, there is no supply cap on Ethereum. It exists specifically to launch smart contracts that are... Mm-hmm. That, that's the key, right? So the smart contract is what I love about Ethereum personally. Like so much of this is currency and we get into like the, the speculative investment because so much money is being made and lost. But you said it before, it's really technology that people don't understand. The blockchain specifically is, is the future of all commerce. So, But what people don't understand is that Bitcoin was always capable of smart contracts and smart contracts that are more powerful than Ethereum smart contracts. Ethereum is limited by, the, it's a very fundamentally different uh, design. They they use a gas model, and and this is why the fees are, mm-hmm. are astronomical For when the there's NFTs a bunch of traffic and, yeah. and all this stuff. So, in Bitcoin, nodes are competitive. Whereas, so every node in Ethereum needs to cross every threshold together. Mm-hmm. So the network is only as fast as the weakest node in the network. Which, in my opinion, it's it's an altruistic system. Which, in my opinion, is is garbage. You should never build a network that is is based on altruism. So everybody's trying to 
placate everyone, have it have it so that everyone can run nodes. This is why they want to switch to proof of stake. Like, well, we'll get more people to run more nodes. That'll be good. And I, I think the exact opposite. I would rather have 10 people who are ruthless and mm-hmm. really, really want to scale, really want to disrupt everything and are willing to do anything to make that possible. And that's how Bitcoin's designed. Bitcoin uses what's called the UTXO model, which allows them to parallelize and compete. So rather than having one chain that is is jumping to each block, you have maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of nodes that are competing to build the best block. And they want to orphan everybody else. They want to force everybody to go their direction because they're sure. the best. Who's this? This is any one of them. This is the way the Bitcoin protocol is designed. So, so right now it could be anybody and it, and it could change on a dime. In fact, this is why we've seen you know the, these fiefdoms grow up in Bitcoin and then crash down. And mm-hmm. it's because it's like, Look, man, I'm just better than you. And if you can't keep up, if you cannot be better than me, you lose and you should lose. And that's what makes Bitcoin great. Go back to Ethereum. So when you talk about the, the, I brought up the NFTs, half the NFTs that are being bought, they're being bought through Ethereum. That's what I keep hearing about. The fact that people are buying NFTs through Ethereum. Correct. But Solano, all, all these other guys are coming, they can buy NFTs through, right? So is that something where if... We know NFTs are not going away. We know there's going to be a fall, you know, the rise and the fall, just similar to the stock market. People are getting prepared for it. But if we know NFT is going to be around, we know Meta's not going away. It's here, right? That's sure. not like a maybe we're going to do it. The moment Zuck said that, everybody started Googling <laughs> Meta, checking what that is yep. all about, mm-hmm. right? So isn't that a solid argument for the Ethereum community to say, look, uh, we understand that you said, what, 50 per second or 15 per 15. second? 15. 15 per yeah. second. Eventually, we're going to figure this out, just like Tesla eventually figured it out. We're going to figure it out. So my follow-up to that would be two questions for you to answer is, if Ethereum does figure it out, okay? I don't know what the numbers, whether they get to 5,000, 10,000, or 50,000 at Visa's level. I don't yeah. know. But if they do, would they be the cream of the crop coin out there if they do figure it out? I mean, the, the, I think that if is impossible. I, I, would, I would put the if at nearing 0% chance. But if they did, so, if they did. Well, sure. I mean, whoever whoever can be the most disruptive and, and bring on the most people to do the most business with the least amount of friction yeah. should absolutely win. But I don't think Ethereum has any of those things. What actually. about uh, Solana? You hear that sort of replacing the Ethereum? I, I really don't like Solana either. I, I think Solana Solana is a really, really great implementation of a really bad protocol. It, mm-hmm. It's essentially just... Uh, a bunch of good stuff about Ethereum and and some good stuff about Bitcoin, but they've missed the boat on a lot of things. What they do have is really great software developers. So the UX and, and all of this stuff is excellent, but at a protocol level, it can't scale either. It, it hits a scale ceiling. That means it needs to be fundamentally re-engineered from the ground up. And that's not something, for example, that we can do with the internet. We can't just be like, mm-hmm. all right, guys, so I know we went down this path and we're, we're hitting a wall here. We need to shut the internet off for 90 days while we relaunch and retool, right? That's... That's not going to work for the world, and no, it's no, the exact I, I believe same it was, thing. It was shut the internet down for 15 days to slow the spread. I believe is, is what yeah. it was. That yeah, was that worked it. really well too. <laughs> so, so I, I, so then this leads me to a question for you: Are you going to a place where you're saying these are the two, three, four, five coins that could potentially dot dot dot? Are there those coins out there? In my opinion, so if you look at Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin SV is the only blockchain right now that has all parameters are open and they are they are minor settings so each node can compete right now there is no protocol what, level what is a node i'm sorry so a node is a computer that validates transactions and writes transactions to the blockchain so mm-hmm. if, if you have a, a soft wallet on on your phone and you sent let's say you're using exodus and you send a bitcoin transaction mm-hmm. that is being broadcast to nodes mining mining computers that that will write your transaction to the ledger gotcha so those are the nodes right now in in btc bitcoin they are not allowed to attempt to build a block bigger than one megabyte that's it that's that's the swim lanes that have been decided by software developers whose names you don't know and and who you do not know how to petition that's what bothers me a little bit about bitcoin the the anonymity look i understand why people who made billions and billions of dollars would not want anybody to know that they had billions and billions of dollars sure but you find out there's some, you know, like finding out people like Calvin Air and you know some people that are they're really, really. Like, this, the, let me just get right to it. I mean, like Satoshi, does he exist? Does he not exist? Does is, is it a real person? Is it amalgamation? And if you can't know who's controlling this, why should you invest anything in it? Well, and that's the thing. I mean, it's it's a zeitgeist, right? It's it, it's the exact same thing with. 
Is, is this the word of the day? That's the word of his life, my man. Pots yeah. and pans. <laughs> so you can it, tell Gerard prepared that question for the <laughs> time. <laughs> Big well, time. Th- I mean, that's, yeah. let's let's go back to the religious analogy. Like, I mean, you never met Jesus. Why why go to church on Sunday? You know, it's the, there's there's an aspect of faith to all of these things, and mm-hmm. including money in general. Are you comparing Satoshi Nakamoto to Jesus? I, I think there's a lot of really applicable analogies there. Really? Absolutely. Hundred percent. Whoa. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 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 somebody people people disagree whether or not like who he is, whether it's one person or many. Uh, you know, what was he? Re- In fact, there's there's all kinds of people on the internet. What was it? An AI from the future? Has he come back? You know, like he was Jewish though, for sure. But, but some Satoshi. Satoshi or Jesus? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> so so J- Jesus is from the tribe of Judah, and yes, it's very to, much to, a... To help Adam understand better, you could say Satoshi is more like Biden. You'd never know where he's they, at. They like, they you, you know, just to yeah. help you, you know. Yeah, right. He's making peace around yeah, the world. Just, but so, go ahead. In, in my opinion, Satoshi yeah. Nakamoto is an Australian man. <laughs> who is a, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, that Craig Wright is the primary architect of Bitcoin. I believe he wrote the white paper. And you just pissed a lot of people oh, off. Oh, I know. It, this is the you single most this is the most unpopular thing. In fact, I guarantee you're lighting up right now with ah, oh, this guy's a scammer, kick him out, your your reputation's done. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Craig Wright, um, so Craig Wright is right now in, in Miami. Yeah, there's a lawsuit going on right now Correct. in the, Florida. The largest private lawsuit of all time. There's about a hundred and sixty billion dollars being asked they're for saying, by the They're plaintiff. saying that it's the trial of the century. Mm-hmm. It was OJ, now it's Satoshi. Do you know who started calling it the trial of the century? Just Lane Maxwell's lawyers. That's you? Guy. That's oh, you. Really? That's, That's my line. So <laughs> Lane Maxwell's lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Focus very hard on that. Do not look yeah. here. Look over there, please. Yeah. And, and when you say Miami, there's Art Basel going on this week. It's a big deal. There's a lot of yep. NFT crypto stuff going on at the Art Basel art, yep. obviously. Then there's the um, DeFi conference going yep. on near the airport. Is that mm-hmm. why... Craig Wright's in town. Is that why? No, no. Craig town? Wright is in town at, at federal court. He is oh, okay. likely at the there Wilkie D. Ferguson federal court building right now. The jury Wilkie's. is actually deliberating. The case is over, and the jury is currently deliberating. We're actually expecting a verdict today. But it's a civil. Su- it's, a, it's a civil suit, not a criminal suit. It is a civil suit yeah. between the estate of Dave Kleiman, which okay. which says that Dave was fifty percent of of the Satoshi Nakamoto team, and then Craig Wright says absolutely he was not a business partner in any regard. He was my dear friend. He did help me edit the white paper, but he always helped me edit white papers. He was essentially a contractor who was also a friend, but Bitcoin was my idea. I'm the architect of it. He helped me with some of the trimmings, and and I'm happy to deal with that, yeah. but but he does not get 50% of, of my, my invention. You, you, you interviewed a, Craig, I right? did. Did you but, not? But, I yeah. did. And, and by the way, yeah. Yeah. we had a great time together. Tell Phenomenal us conversation. To, I just... I enjoy talking to him, but I got to tell you, afterwards, after yeah. interviewing Craig Wright, there's only been about, well, I can't say that. He's probably in the top 10 interviews that I got the most DMs, emails, tweets, oh, yeah. people pissed off about having Craig Wright on. So go back into why you think it is Craig Wright, because there's a lot of different names that you hear about. Why why him? Sure. So this really should be prefaced with the Bitcoin Civil War. This is this is why. This okay. is not this is not just a cultural disagreement thing. Mm-hmm. This is this is Israel versus Palestine kind of stuff. Oh, Sunni Shia, it's, Ex- I mean, this is they, exactly. they're this, never going to agree on anything. Exactly. So the the reason that I think it's Craig Wright, first of all, is that every other potential candidate makes absolutely zero sense. So people bring up like Nick Zabo or they bring up uh, even Hal Finney. Hal Finney, what's up with that? Hal, Hal Finney's a very cool guy. He's a very talented software engineer. He fundamentally disagreed with Satoshi in public. I mean, you can read their conversations. Mm-hmm. Hal Finney didn't understand Bitcoin. He was a software engineer and very talented and Satoshi gave him software work to do. None of this is contentious, but Hal never understood Bitcoin. He argued with Satoshi about how it should be Wait, wait, so Satoshi does exist? Satoshi absolutely exists. He yes. exists? Yes. Oh, so Dan okay. Pena is full of shit. First time ever. <laughs> First time ever. He does. Dan Pena? <laughs> Dan Pena. I would, First time I would, full of I would, First time. He's been yeah. right about literally everything I, yeah. always. I like I Dan Pena, but, so. but I, I think he's you know missing why? the boat here. You know why? you're a pussy. <laughs> So, so the other guys, like they look at Bitcoin and they say, ah, it's got security problems. Everybody would need to run a node. It can't scale. And Satoshi always argued with these guys. No, 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 no. It can scale. No, you do not need to run a node. Only people that are trying to mine coins need to run a node. So there's this big disagreement on all these definitions in Bitcoin. So we can't even get past 
the basic presuppositions of what is Bitcoin, how is Bitcoin, yeah. all of that. This, a, this sounds like an Iron Sorkin movie. And it's been this from, is, this it's is been the from social network. day one. So the very first response, when Satoshi put the white paper out and said, hi, I'm Satoshi, I've solved the double spend problem, here's the Bitcoin white paper, the first guy came out to say, well, here's why it doesn't work. And, and they have this, this rant that is, is very typical, even in social media today. Well, it can't scale because everyone would need to run a node, and then it, it would have this problem, and then you can't propagate blocks and blah, blah, blah. And Satoshi basically gave the big blocker version. This is the side of Bitcoin that I fall on of saying, no, absolutely not. Bitcoin could do visa level transactions today with existing hardware. And he explained the basics on how, but he didn't go really deeply into it. And he said, but nonetheless, the network hasn't even launched yet. But don't worry, nodes can consolidate into commercial operations where everyone connects into what is essentially what we know today as a mining pool and describes out all the ways that it can scale and how it should work. And people started to fight immediately. So the very first conversation was actually the opening shots of the Bitcoin civil war. And we haven't gotten past it. And then Satoshi very suddenly disappeared in late 2010. So the, the white paper came out in 2008, late 2008, and then he was gone by 2010. Largely forced out, basically sick of bickering is the way that I see it, because it was everybody saying, ah, Satoshi, you don't get it. And he's just saying, like, don't tell me what I don't get about the thing that I architected. Hmm. And then at some point, he just said, you know what? I have so many other things to do. I'm going to pass the keys to uh, Gavin Andreessen. He's the new lead developer. You guys are okay. And then he specifically said, stop referring to me as a shadowy figure and stop treating Bitcoin like uh, crime money, that kind of thing. Like, that's not what he was interested in. And so then Satoshi was gone. And then immediately his, his repo was moved from SourceForge and put onto GitHub and a bunch of new people were put in charge. And then all of his stuff was burned down. The history of Satoshi was whitewashed. And then it turned into, hey, here's this big uh, investment opportunity. And by the way, we're, we're creating this new voting process with soft forks and, mm -hmm. and Bitcoin improvement uh, proposal systems. And we're going to have uh, this, this group of maintainers. And so it turned from governance by proof of work, which is, in my opinion, the most important thing that's been invented in the last probably 50 years. And then it turned into what is essentially a, a social democracy, which is everything wrong with money today is the fact that there are gatekeepers and people can vote on it. And some of the votes happen behind closed doors. And then people are, are given this illusion of voting with their quote unquote nodes, but they're not actually voting. Like what they've been given to vote on is already the, the milk toast that has been approved by let's, various let's, levels let's, of gatekeepers. Let's step, back. let's step back a little bit because I, I want to keep this simple for the audience to understand it. So uh, uh, simplify story. Mm -hmm. Craig Wright says he, he's the only person that's come out and said he's Satoshi Nakamoto, right? I don't think he's not. There are other people that have claimed they are. Who else has? That's a credible name. Who else has? Because no, no, nobody credible. Everyone else has fallen give me apart some, under scrutiny. Give me the biggest uh, name that came out that said that. Phil, Phil Wilson is probably the most interesting okay. guy. Phil Wilson, for the record, also says, well, yeah, it was me and Craig and Dave. So even Phil, who I think is kind of a sketchy character, he's another Australian fellow. Mm -hmm. And and he tells the story. Uh, it was me, Craig Wright, and Dave Kleiman. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, Phil w Wilson worked at some of the same companies as contractors and stuff as Craig. So one of the big reasons why I really think that it's Craig is, A, Craig has a background in statistics, finance, economics, theology. He's 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 got... I don't even know, half a dozen PhDs, got another 20 this master's degrees, this is, Craig Wright. Okay, yeah, I remember that. So, but Craig goes on BBC, and he's going to put in the keys and show the fact that he owns this, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh, shit, you know, it's not working. Right. And it was a bit of a, uh, you know, a controversial issue, because if you really say you are Satoshi Nakamoto, and you go on BBC, and you kind of, you know, mm -hmm. flip-flop, yeah. not able to show it, he lost a lot of credibility that There's, day. It, and indeed. And, and this is why, even to this day, he's, he's among the most contentious people in, in the space. They look at it and say, if you couldn't prove it then, you can't prove it ever, you're definitely not Satoshi Nakamoto. I think that's unfair. But the reason that I think it's unfair is, is specifically because, I mean, there's a million reasons why that, that could be. And I think that if he was a scammer, if this was all false, he would have disappeared at that point. Like, who wouldn't, right? If It's but, like, but, but okay, the jig me, is up, I'm out. Let me give the <laughs> question back to you, okay? Uh, 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 everybody in this room. Just a question for everybody in this room. Okay, you ready? Uh, uh, how many guys have forgotten your Chase or Bank of America or Wells Fargo password? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have you? Yeah. Okay. Have you? Have you no. ever? Have you ever? Yes, you have. Uh, you have. You have as well. You have as well. Okay. Uh, uh, would we put uh, a guy named Craig Wright with ten PhDs as one of the smartest guys if he really created? Uh, 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 Bitcoin, you'd have to put him as one of the smartest guys out there, right? 
Sure. Okay, if he's one of the smartest guys out there that produced a revolutionary product. By the way, mm-hmm. I want to believe it's him. I, I enjoy talking to him. I can't have yep. him, wait to have him back on the podcast and have the conversation with him. Mm-hmm. If that is the case, the question that people bring up is, how does that guy forget it? Because the amount of money that he has is how much of this is the money that he has? Like in this? Fifty-four billion or something? No, uh, no, it's bigger than that. Uh, now. Two hundred and fifty-two billion dollars is yeah. what it was That's estimated what he, in court. He would be the second yeah. richest man in the world, maybe the richest man today because uh, yep. Tesla took that, a hit. That's, yep. So, so if you if that is like, but that's why some people think that he forgot the. The, the key as well, so that they can actually see, go in and see exactly how much he had, how many hundreds of thousands of coins he had in pre-mining. I mean, if he well, wasn't, there from it the wasn't pre-mined, it was it was public. It was it was said three months before, like, hey, mining starts sometime in the future. Let's get set up. Like that that was the point of coming. Even out with early. his partners, Pat. I mean, like uh, like the guy Calvin Air is the interesting guy to me, man. Like, I mean, who who financed all this? And if you financed all this, do you own Bitcoin? Like, do you have an ownership state? If you financed everything, are you the owner of Bitcoin? Have you financed everything? And, and if you know anything about Calvin Air, if people that don't know Calvin Air, go follow his Twitter. He's a very interesting character. He is an interesting character. He's a and he's a serious disruptor. He he he's the guy that brought internet to half of Canada. Uh, he took the money that he made from that and, and created a software company that disrupted the gambling industry. Mm-hmm. Then he basically took over the online gambling industry with Bodog and, and became the number one online gambling mogul. Period. He also in- invented uh, a number of things that ended up competing with PayPal and things like that back mm-hmm. in the day, which is why he got into the Bitcoin Pretty space. Pretty incredible but stuff. Also has a predilection for females that even Dan Bilzerian's like, I don't know, bro, that's a little young. I, you know, uh, uh, some of this stuff has come up in the past, and the people that have brought it up have ended up having to uh, pay restitution and things to Calvin. So it's... There, there are accusations and nothing's been, nothing's ever been proven. Charges have never come out or any of that. And he happily shares the pictures across Twitter mm-hmm. and very much understands the legality issues that that would arise should these things be, uh, you know, illegal. Mm-hmm. So I, I, so so okay. So yeah. let's go back to this. So the Florida trial. So yes. so far we talked about Craig Wright, fantastic. He talked about Florida trial, the the, yep. the trial of the century, which you call it. So uh, Craig Wright is here in Miami. They're all talking. What's going yep. on? Wall Street Journal does an article saying Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto could be unmasked at Florida trial, right, with this going on. It's almost a way of saying you better come out and reveal yourself, right? Yeah. Has anybody else stepped out outside of Craig to say, I am the guy, or no? Has there Amid this trial, absolutely not. Like, like I mentioned, Phil Wilson, there's been a couple of other uh, goofballs that have come out and told, told stories, but none of, them, none of them make any sense. And, and Craig Wright is the only – first of all, Craig didn't out himself. Craig was doxxed by Wired and Gizmodo magazine in 2015. Uh, at the same time, the ATO was raiding his home, and a local a- – ATO is the Australian IRS. And the local media in Australia was in front of his house filming it. So somebody coordinated this basically takedown of Craig Wright, not realizing he had left for the U.K. a few months earlier. And ultimately, the reason Craig Wright is a public figure at all is 100 percent not his doing. So these magazines said, this man is Satoshi Nakamoto. What can we learn from him? Blah, 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 blah. So I think that's an important thing to remember is that every other Satoshi candidate came out to say, well, I'm Satoshi, and, and here's why. And, and none of it made any sense. Craig denied it for, for quite some time until he was able to get some of his ducks in a row. And then he would say, OK, look, I'm, I'm going to start to I, I don't want to just tell everyone publicly. I'm going to bring in some people privately. So he brought in Gavin Andreessen, who is the guy who uh, uh, Satoshi left the keys with, um, the lead developer of Bitcoin. And then uh, he brought in John Matonis, who was the head of the Bitcoin Foundation at the time. And a couple other people were offered. And as I understand it, somewhere between six and ten other people have seen. And he said, look. I want, to, I want to do this right. I want to show you guys in private. I'm going to do a, a, a public key, private key signing, prove that I control Satoshi Nakamoto's assets, and that that is, that is one aspect of proving that I'm Satoshi. The problem is, is that the second he did that, Gavin Andreessen had his keys burned. He was removed from Bitcoin court, again, amid the Bitcoin civil war. So these people were like, oh, wow, Craig Wright is Satoshi? Boom. Gavin Andreessen, you're out. Kurt, I'm, I'm so confused, man. Didn't, didn't you say Satoshi actually exists like as a human being? A hundred percent. So other people know him and have interacted with him? Correct. But there's this... Still... But it's on the internet, not in person? Oh, but it's not in person. I mean, I... Is that right? I know Craig personally. Yeah. And y- so, I'm, yes. Is so, that way? I'm, 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 my mind's <laughs> being blown right now. Is this like a metaverse thing where Craig is Satoshi online? C- Craig... So it's, it's an alias. So it's a pseudonym. Craig's so there is no Satoshi. 
as a that's human a fake being. Name. It's like, a fake name. Like it's a, a fake name. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. No, no, that's kind of like it's you like a, write a book and you don't want to use your name. And yeah, you, like Gerard Michaels. I get it. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. a pen name. I get yeah. it. Yeah. But wait, so there actually is no Satoshi Nakamoto. I mean, there are probably people on Earth named Satoshi Nakamoto. No, you didn't Nakamoto. hear about the story, the guy that There's Satoshi guy Nakamoto, they went and knocked on his yes. door. Like, and then I, he's like, I'm telling you, I'm not I'm not the founder of Bitcoin. Wait, so this is a, okay. All right. Gerard, you're a joke. There's Gerard. no way. I, His real this name is, is the not whole thing. I have a hard time, time out. with Gerard. How do you not know this? Time out, man. He's playing no, no, with no, you no, right no, now. No, I don't think he is. No, I'm not. I think he got I, knocked I in the thought, head this weekend. Dude, I did not. The the I thought that there was still debate whether this guy, Satoshi Nakamoto, actually existed or if it was BS. Well, there Are is. you saying there the name or the debate. human? The, the human being. Yeah. Satoshi Nakamoto. I think people understand that it's a human that created this. His name wasn't really... Satoshi Nakamoto. I didn't know that that could was settled. Could have been Craig. I didn't know that that it was settled. Been I had Bill. no idea that that was, that was settled science. Settled science, bro. <laughs> Trust the science, man. So, anyways. <laughs> no so, then, so then what happened is, is Gavin Andreessen and John Matonis both basically got burned, kicked out of the community. You're not real Bitcoiners. Craig isn't real. He's does, on this, the does this guy Gavin claim to have met Satoshi? Oh, yeah. He was under deposition in Miami court. And and what did he say? He said, you know what? There were things that were goofy about the whole situation, but at the end of the day, I, I believe that I met Satoshi Nakamoto. And, and who that it did was he Craig say Wright. it was? It, it was, was Craig, Craig Wright. Wright. So Craig Wright wow. is, is Kaiser Sose. It's, Kaiser Sose. It's, it's Kaiser Satoshi. Kaiser, yes. Kaiser Satoshi Nakamoto. So let me, let me show That's you this. Let me show you this. It. Let me show you this. Just, just yeah. in the last 30 days, this is what's happened. I saw two articles. So if you want to pull this up, uh, one of them is what Hillary Clinton said. One of them is what Rand Paul said. I don't know if you heard this. I'm, I'm sure you did. So uh, if you can pull this up a little bit higher, a little bit higher, there you go, with the picture shown, perfect. Bitcoin could become world re uh, reserve currency, says Senator Rand Paul. This is October 25th, a uh, little over four weeks ago, right? This is what he is saying. World reserve currency, says Rand Paul. Hillary Clinton just comes out a week ago or two weeks ago. This is a week ago. She says, she fears Bitcoin will undermine dollar as world reserve currency. Which one is more likely to happen or will both happen? So I think they're both talking about BTC, Bitcoin, because that's what people assume. I think it is incapable of being a world reserve currency. It doesn't have the capacity to settle anything near what would be needed in, in, a, in bandwidth terms. B BTC is heavily crippled. It does not work. It, it really, really only works for what people are using it for today, which is an investment asset. Front run people, get other people to buy it, you've become more rich, and that's great. And that's really everything that's going on there. It cannot do, even with the layer two stuff, all of that stuff is, is a lot of vaporware, and the stuff that works really only works in, in bubbles. And so I, I think, frankly, they're both wrong. But where they're right is that the Bitcoin protocol, what so Satoshi Nakamoto actually invented, is capable of doing that. It, it, it should absolutely be a both end. It should be a frictionless digital cash. It should be a tokenization layer. It can do smart contracts worldwide right now. Yeah. It, in fact, is doing it, uh, but it's on BSV. So what Bitcoin SV is, and this is why Craig Wright and all this stuff is tied together, is that Bitcoin SV is Bitcoin as it was implemented by Satoshi Nakamoto. So there's no swim lanes in the protocol. So whatever you want to try to do, if you want to try to push an entire operating system in one transaction and then have tokens interact with that operating system all up in the stack, you can do that. It's not going to stop you. So miners might stop you. If you don't pay enough fee, the miner may not mine it and put it on, on chain. I think the token's pretty interesting because uh, you could, I could anyway see a future where every city has its own currency. And For it's, sure. It's a token that's you know Bitcoin-based or, or some sort of blockchain-based. Absolutely. There'd be, instead of paying cash... To get an MTA card to ride the subway mm -hmm. in New York, you'll have the, New York will have its own coin. It'll have its own token. Yes. And digital currency, like Pat was, you know, we were talking about earlier. There, there was land sold in in in, uh, in metaverse. The metaverse, which is mm -hmm. nuts to me, man. Because yeah. one of my favorite quotes from The Sopranos was when Tony Soprano, you know, tries to give fatherly advice to AJ. He's like, "Buy land. God ain't making <laughs> no more of it. God's making more land now. It's digital land. Yep. It's crazy. No, it's true. So I mean, you know, go go west, young young son. No, west for, for sure. expansion. And 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 this is. Or Meta matters. acres and a mule, and this is and this is why. <laughs> so, <I'm, laughs> this is why I, I'm such an advocate for the Bitcoin protocol, which again, in, in my belief, really only exists in Bitcoin SV. It, it's the only one that can do those things. So right now, like, and, and just for clarification, Bitcoin SV is different than 
BTC. Correct. So they both are. Break that down. They're both based on the Bitcoin protocol in a very basic sense. So in a, it, it's it's kind of like the the Judaism, Christianity, LDS, m- Islam, and all these things. Like there's forks, right? Mm-hmm. But they fundamentally it's all are, an Abrahamic. Religion. They're fundamentally Abrahamic religions, right? So this is this is all these Bitcoin variants are fundamentally Satoshi-ish implementations of Bitcoin, in, including things like Litecoin or Peercoin or Dash. Or all these things are still like. 95% the same thing at the very base mm-hmm. level, but the way they're implemented has has a bunch of different variables. And so BTC is Bitcoin, but implemented with a bunch of the stack turned off. So the opcodes, the stuff that would allow smart contracts, a lot of it just turned off because it's like, ah, eh, that stuff's kind of a security issue. We don't want to play with that. Also, we don't want more than six megabytes per hour to go across the whole network or else people in the third world won't be able to, to operate nodes. And we want everyone to be able to have an endpoint on the network. Isn't this what Ripple wanted to do, but they just were dumb enough to incorporate it in the United States? Or Yeah, yeah. I mean, R- Ripple's the same thing. Ripple is, is also very similar to Bitcoin in most ways that matter. Mm-hmm. So almost every blockchain is, is basically just a derivation of the same idea. So what Bitcoin SV is, is, okay, we're going to implement Bitcoin, but we're not going to have any hard limits on things. So whatever you want to try to do, whatever economic actors want to push on the economy and see if they can create a market, create an economy yeah. with a new idea, you can do it on BSV today. Like Ethereum, you can't do it. The NFTs on Ethereum aren't even actually on Ethereum. You own a string of numbers. You don't own the artwork. In fact, people are getting censored off of Ethereum right now for their political cartoons. Like if you put a political cartoon that is unsavory in some way, you can just eliminate the art because the art is sitting on Open Seas server or it's sitting on AWS or it's sitting maybe on IPFS. But that art disappears, and you only own the hash. Bitcoin SV right now, there are like 3D objects as NFTs made in – I mean, you can grab them, you can play with them, but they're on-chain. They are in the blockchain. They can't be deleted. And that's the only blockchain that does it. Everybody else is selling you a string of digits, and they're hosting your file on their servers. And whenever they feel like, you know what, I'm done with this, they shut the server off, and you lost the piece of art that you think you own. Let me me ask you, do, do you own any Bitcoin or Ethereum? I, I own a little bit of a lot of things, but a, a lot of it is is old school. Like I've, I've been in the space for nine years now, so some of it is I, I probably have stuff that I don't even know exists at this point. But that's but smart yes. not to answer with Joe Biden's guy right <laughs> no, now. Well, no, well, no, what, but, what do you mean that you know doesn't exist? What does that mean? Um, so I mean, just in testing, like if we're going back to 2015. So I actually yeah. used to be an Ethereum miner. I was mining Monero in 2016 and 17. Like I've I've gotten myself into a lot of things. To, like, what is the most see. recent coin you invested in or you bought? Recent? Um, BSV. I'm, I'm heavy in the BSV okay. space. Got it. So when you, so let's talk about the mining, the difference between Ethereum mining and mm-hmm. Bitcoin. You'll see uh, uh, one of the arguments will come up to mine one Bitcoin cost. You know, you hear somebody, the $48,000, $42,000, et cetera, sure. et cetera. Explain to the average person what it means that it costs Forty-two, forty-eight thousand dollars sure. to mine a Bitcoin or mine an Ethereum, which is what you used to do. Yep. Um, so what you're doing when you're mining is you're actually you're trying to brute force a number. So the the network says find this number, and here's a bunch of math problems to get you there. And then what you do is is what's called a brute force. So you get a bunch of computers to test: is it this number? Is it that number? Is it this number? Is it that number? But they're doing it at an incredible speed and just absolutely bonkers speed. In fact, this is the most. Uh, progress in computer science and Moore's law and all of this stuff has been toward breaking hashes specifically for hashing on on blockchain assets. So what you're doing is you're hunting for one number. And in Bitcoin, that is a SHA-256 number. And on Ethereum right now, it's it's ETH hash, which is a... I'm not going to get into the, the math and science of it because nobody cares. But um, in Ethereum, you use GPUs. So it is like the graphics cards that, that people want on their gaming computer. This is why gamers hate crypto people, because they can't get the GPUs to make their games cool, because they just keep getting bought up by, by Ethereum miners primarily. Gamers hate the crypto people. They do. And so what you're doing there is you can run a GPU farm, which is quieter. It's a lot less energy efficient, but it's it's the best way to mine Ethereum today. And, and so a lot of people GPU mine, and, and that's what they do. On SHA-256, it's specifically ASIC mining, which is application-specific integrated circuit, meaning it is a computer that is designed to do absolutely nothing but look for Bitcoin hashes. Yeah. And so it's very, very heavily specialized, whereas Ethereum miners, when they're, you know, if you decide, you know what, I don't want to be an Ethereum miner mm-hmm. anymore, you can put those GPUs on eBay and sell them to the gamers again, and the gamers, oh, you know, there's been a drop, we get to do this. So, But ultimately, what you're doing as a miner 
you're, you're looking for a hash, and that's really all you're doing. What's a hash? A hash is um, it's a string of numbers that represents some other thing. So I can make, uh, let, let's say I write the number, you know, my birthday, and then I, I run it through an algorithm. It will spit out a hash, and the algorithm can always connect that hash to my birthday mm. if that's what I want it to do. So it's a proof of the existence of the first thing. But hashes mean it can be something as simple as, as, a, as a very simple, uh, like, like my birthday written out, or it can be a whole novel. I, I can make it Moby Dick. I can make it the entire Library of Congress, and I can hash it. And the hash will be the same size regardless of the DNA. input. Correct. It is digital DNA. It's a fingerprint that points to the proof of existence of another thing, but in a way that is uh, standardized and, and easily attestable. So that's what they're looking for. They're looking. So why does it cost so much money, though? Because it's competitive. So specifically, it's if I can do it better than you, then I then I will because I'll make that money. But if but if Gerard figures out a, a new way to do it, maybe he's got better uh, whatever, better computer science background, or, or he can pay somebody to build a better chip. Then all of a sudden he's Faster more rigs, more energy. He's more competitive than us. Then I need to figure out. Oh shoot, what do I do? Like, do I go to the third world and and try to find an old diesel plant and make it that my power is cheaper or whatever? Mm -hmm. So it's this competitive nature. It is free market economics, one hundred percent at play, that makes it that. I'm going to compete with you, but then you're going to compete better, but yeah, then but you're why, going to compete so better. Why is the argument about it, it? The reason why Bitcoin will never end up being the currency is because it costs so much money and it's, it requires so much energy and power, right? Why, do, why does that constantly come up? Because um, most people are communists and they don't realize it. So people that talk about cost without talking about ROI are dim, period. It's ROI. <laughs> This guy. You say anything bad about communism, this guy's going to try to make out with you on camera. Here. It took off your, your head. I feel, I, feel, right, right. I feel you on such a level, Kurt. Yeah. This guy's slightly uh, poking out right now. Um, <laughs> but it, it's true, though. So the, okay. cost, the, the, the cost conversation is fine, but, but people that talk about cost without ROI aren't mm -hmm. having a real conversation. These are people that, that should go get a minimum wage job and stay in their lane. <laughs> so, but, but if you're creating you're value. Saying, you're saying experts don't say that? You're saying, uh, yeah, like for example, can you Google, uh, 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 Tyler, do me a favor, Google what it costs, how much energy does mining a Bitcoin uh, uh, take? So uh, apparently it's more energy Bitcoin. than there you Apple, go. Click on that, Google, right there. But, but it's the time, Tesla, well. yeah, everything even combined. If you're no, great the at only this, reason still, the months. only reason I'm at, okay, stay right there. Let me just read that real quick. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, uh, go back, go back real quick. Uh, okay, so Business Insider is not a communist yet. I mean, I know we're going <laughs> after Business Insider's got a bad reputation with whatever's going on, but Bitcoin mining consumes around 91 terawatt hours of electricity annually. Okay, Bitcoin mining. That's more annual electricity used than of all of Finland, which is a country of five and a half million people. That's almost half a percent of all electricity consumption worldwide and a 10 times jump from just five years ago. Mm -hmm. So this isn't a, you know, Reddit crazy, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 guy that's saying this. So go back, go, go into the article. Let's read a little bit more. Go to, all the way to the top. Let me just read this. Our Bitcoin mining consumes uh, globally and seven times Google's total usage. New reports as and Google is the number one search engine. Go a little lower. Uh, go a little over half a percent uh, okay, consumption, according to New York Times. That's uh, roughly seven times on Google. Bitcoin's negative environmental impact is expected to become a bigger issue as cryptocurrency gains more popularity. Okay, I, by the way, I see the fact if New York Times is saying this and they're linking it to environmental impact, you already know where this is going next. Yep. See more, so go a little lower. Go a little lower, see what else they're saying about this. It is difficult to measure exactly how much energy Bitcoin mining consumes, but a new analyst by the New York Times shared some uh, staggering info, input. Okay, and that's the stuff that we just read right now. So it's not, um, you know, it's not just one person saying it or two people saying it. Sure. I'm, I'm really trying to find out for myself. If we're going in a direction right now where uh, we keep printing money, mm -hmm. okay, which has been the strategy for the last 24 months, yep. okay? Cool. And the printing of money is not left and right. Bush started it back in the oh, days absolutely. with, Longer you know, we, we can talk about quantitative easing that mm -hmm. started with, mm -hmm. Uh, the, who's the, uh, the first the Greenspan? Was yeah. it Green? Okay, Alan they start. Alan yeah. Greenspan. So hey, quantitative easing is actually a good thing. You know, we go buy, give money to the banks, and they buy shitty business that's out of business. But yep. you're putting money in there, and hopefully the money's going to go to the middle income. 
And then eventually realize the more they're doing that, inflation, next thing you know, we got 6.2%. We can't wait to see what the numbers are going to be next. So for me, I, I, I would like to see a potential different currency that holds everybody accountable that you sure. cannot manipulate, specifically the government cannot. So it would be kind of cool to have a different currency. Some said, hey, we're going to go to gold standard, Peter Schiff, gold standard. Nothing's happened with gold the last 18 months. Right. I own gold. Nothing's happened with gold in yep. the last 18 months, right? So if there is a possibility of us going on something that publicly you can count and they can't print, that'd be a beautiful thing. But the fact that it takes that much energy in today's climate, don't you see that as an issue? I don't. In fact, um, if you look at Bitcoin mining versus what is going on in the rest of the world, like you're ignoring, like, yes, Google. And Google is a big player, but they're not the only player. If you look at the entire global economy and what they are doing in order to bootstrap whatever we call the global financial system, so all of these things, all these players, they're using exponentially more energy than, than Bitcoin. Now, here's my problem again with, with Bitcoin BTC is that what are we doing with all that energy on BTC? What we're essentially doing is securing a bunch of coins that are sitting on people's paper wallets or ledger nanos or whatever. You know, They're sitting there and they're not doing it. They're not creating anything with that money. And this is a problem for me, too. This is why I actually argue that the BTC community has become uh, bourgeoisie, whatever. They're, they're very um, – they've got a, a communist – penchant to their to their behavior. They're not building things with Bitcoin. They're not using Bitcoin as a tool to disrupt the actual economy. And so it does become a problem. Then it does become wasteful. If this is just securing what's in my wallet, that's that is a problem. And it's it's not a problem for me to, to go out and physically change for someone else. It's incumbent upon me to build business use cases that that supersede that. So imagine if what I was doing with Bitcoin was replacing Twitter, for example. Twitter's a giant nightmare of a company. They're a terrible company, but everybody uses them because everybody's there. But they're they're also very wasteful. Think about how much server space is actually exists just to keep Twitter online. Now, if we were to move over to Bitcoin, at BSV, for example, has the the Twitch network, which you have an account, as I recall. I do. Yeah, I do. I spoke to the founder of it. Him and I went back and forth. Uh, uh, I had different interests with them, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I do have an account with them. And so. So what they've done is they are they are putting everything on chain in the stack. It's it's up in Bitcoin. It runs in Bitcoin. It's not using other infrastructure. So we can ignore. We can eliminate Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure and all these other things that are also consuming a lot of energy. But it also has the added benefit of extreme censorship resistance. People can have political opinions that are maybe unsavory, but can't be deleted just because Jack Dorsey or this new goon CEO can uh, you know wow well, I don't I don't like the sound of that. And it's, it's all on chain. It's, a, it's secured by proof of work. And again, this proof of work, this brute forcing of ideas. So imagine the hash. We talked about brute forcing hashes. Imagine brute forcing every idea and making every node around the, the world use that power, use that energy to, to, to take conflicting ideas. Try to speak, to speak to the audience as if they're a fifth grader right now because you <laughs> went to La La. I know. To, I, I, so come back and simplify yep. for us. Let me go back to the question. Here's a question. If it requires this much energy that people say it requires, you want to use the example of Twitter. Yep. It's seven times Google, which means Twitter's probably freaking uh, nothing. Falling, yeah. It's nothing right. compared to Google, right? I mean, you can't even compare it to. It's probably 700 times uh, Twitter, if not sure. more, right? So that comparison argument, somebody might find a leak and poke it and say, I don't know what about what you're saying here. All I'm going back to is, remember, I would love – to see an alternative to fiat currency. I think most yep. people would love that where the government cannot just say, let's go mine 50 million more Bitcoins. Yeah. You can't bullshit like that, right? Sure. So we don't have to worry about all the other stuff. Why is this constant conversation about how much energy it requires to mine a Bitcoin? Because people aren't focused on what you can create with that cost. People are just looking at the cost and saying that is, a, that is awful consumption. And if you just look at the consumption, I agree. Yeah. And and I agree to the point that people aren't creating disruptive things with their blockchains well, right let now. Me, let me restate the question. I'll ask the question a different way. I'll ask the question a different way. So, uh, uh, for example, okay, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Mafia States of America. We'll give an update before <laughs> the whole thing ends because people need to know what's going on with that. But hypothetically, okay, um, how many total hours have we put into Mafia States of America? Total, everybody, team you know, think about where we were at shooting, oh, 40 man. people, their editors. Can we say, I don't know, total everybody, 10,000 hours? Is that a fair number? 
maybe more. I okay, mean, uh, yeah. let's just say ten thousand hours, yeah. though. Let's just say ten thousand hours. Now, uh, I, the the funder, is going to sit there and say. Why is this costing so much money? It's taking so many hours. It's freaking ridiculous. I don't have manpower to get these guys to edit other projects. I have nine editors working on this one project. Gerard, this is freaking ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. However, however, if when we're done QCing all of it this week, which is going to release December 3rd, we are done putting any time into it mm -hmm. because now it's up there, then I'm good. Meaning... If that energy is required to mine a Bitcoin, it's just the energy required until you mine it. Then it's good to go. It doesn't require any more energy. We're fine. No. But is it a constant energy required to sustain it? Because that's so, a concern. So the other thing that occurs is that uh, you are a transaction processor as well. So the same people that are mining the Bitcoins are yeah. also processing the transactions. So as transactions occur, that, that's also part of the consumption. On BTC, it's almost none comparatively. Sure. But BSV, for example, has more transaction, uh, more of, of what's going on on that network is transactions than it is mining. So, and 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 this is this is why I say like, look, if if we're building a world that is disruptive, mm -hmm. it is more efficient, it's more fair sure. in a way that is verifiable, not arbitrarily fair, but like look at the math. Look, Kurt, to me, that's a complete red herring, man. I mean, you know, if you're using five percent of the world's energy, that's governmental. That's that's not people in their in their backyard on their computers. That means that world governments are using a lot of their energy grid to be able to do that. All right, El Salvador specifically, mm -hmm. one of these com countries that's moving to it as their primary currency. The other thing about that is is that our energy production is only just beginning. Remember, a hundred years ago, you know, the World War One started, and cavalry was still involved. Like right. World War One began, and they were still, I believe it was Poland, was going up against tanks in actual with yep. horses. Yeah. So I mean, we basically just came out of the Middle Ages, guys. A hundred, a hundred years from now, our energy ca capacity is going to be something that we can't even really begin to understand. So, so I think I think the other thing to know about power right now is that that there is more power generated than is used. So until we actually get to the point where we're putting real strain on the grid, I think it's an irrelevant conversation. We haven't even captured the power of the sun, man. Well, but, so, but, I mean, even, but even the, right now, w w as inefficient as our power generation is, we're generating too much power. Even with Bitcoin and even with all the other inefficiencies mm -hmm. that are perceived, we're creating more energy than is used. My big issue with Bitcoin, like to me, that that's an obvious, you know, to me, and again, everybody's a communist, right? But I mean, to me, that that's just <laughs> an obvious hit piece. So what does concern me is a little bit of the decentralization. Like, who can take over Bitcoin? Pat talked about a fiat currency. What pe for people that don't know, basically it means that, that, that the United States dollar isn't backed by anything. The, there's nothing backed. There's no gold standard. You can't tie it to anything. There's nothing. Yeah. Your paper dollar in your pocket is based on nothing more than faith. It's as real as Satoshi. All right? It, it's, <laughs> it really is. It's as real. So, you know, the, the, but Bitcoin doesn't have aircraft carriers. Sure. So there's that aspect of it, you know. So, you know, our Fed Reserve, for as bad as it is, and I, th I think it, the Fed Reserve and, and and the WBO are two of the most evil organizations on earth. I really honestly believe that with every fiber of my being. And they sell for people that don't know the Federal Reserve isn't even a government agency; it's a private bank that sells money to the United yep. States. We buy our money, folks. The money that in your pocket is worth less the second you get it than the second it was printed. We buy our money from a private bank. Yep. So, moving away from this, like Pat said, I think is is absolutely crucial to every American citizen. It's also why they'll never let us do it. Number one, number two, what is to stop Bitcoin from from becoming a world back currency, let's say, and then somebody like Calvin Air being like, oh, yeah, by the way, I own this, and now you guys have to pay this price or this or that. Like, what, what's to stop that from happening? Well, I think, first of all, the way, question. The, the way that it's distributed, first of all, like, there's a reason why it wasn't distributed by, you know, Craig Wright, patent this and that, copyright this and that. It's, it's, co it's actually copywritten to Satoshi Nakamoto, and it's got an open source MIT license. So it's basically, look... Modify it if you want, do what you want to it, but if you make a modification, you need to change the name. So if it's Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin, run Bitcoin. And then the way that it's distributed, the way that it's processed and everything is 100% competitive. Again, it is a pure free market function. And this is why it really matters. This is why I don't like with BTC that the, the BIP process and, and this what has really become democratic socialism in the way that 
that changes are made and changes are implemented in BTC, I think is a major problem. Bitcoin is supposed to be governed 100% by proof of work. And if everybody agrees that, look, you need to compete to create the most value. But, but even there, before you move on from that, Kurt, who governs it? Like, how is it governable? Who's holding each other accountable? Like, what is the process of that accountability? We can say it's proof of work, but, you know, also if there's no fines or penalties, like... But there is. That's the point of proof of work. If you do something that is unsavory to the other nodes in the network, if your proof of work appears to be malicious, mm -hmm. they can just simply say, you know what, we're done with you. We're not going that direction. The, the proof of work will orphan your ideas off of the network. That's the beauty of it, is that if you aren't creating value, the second you have decided, maybe I'm going to be a malicious king, you will cease to be the king, period. We've seen it hundreds of times in Bitcoin. Every time there used to be the the Bitmain, oh, Bitmain's going to take over and they're this, this big conglomerate. And ultimately, people are like, you know what, we don't like Bitmain. We're just basically going to do things that make them go away. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've had to completely change. They've reorganized okay, their entire you can, business. You can, you can obviously see the next logical step in that is, okay, now China just comes in overwhelms the system and says everything that that's not pro us we can orphan the same way but but they really can't because again it's it's based on its principle and proof of work so if they come in with with something that again is malicious to the network the network itself is anti-fragile in that it can say we're basically going to go a different direction i don't if, understand if, what that means the network is it ai the, how, the network doesn't no, it's exist people. It's, yeah it's, that's what i it's, mean it's 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 competitive and people are corruptible a person is corruptible if in a, in a perfect free market system, I believe that in a perfect free market system, we will still have malicious actors, we'll still have serial killers, we'll have these things. Mm -hmm. But if we are all able to compete 100% to be anything we can be, if we can cooperate better, whoever cooperates best will win, and they should win. But the way that they win is by creating the most value for the rest of everyone else. So mm -hmm. I would actually hope that communist China says, okay, we need to mine, we need to participate in this economic disruption by being a node on the network because it will create incentives that make them better people too. That's, that's my desire. I want governments to stop having cold wars and hot wars with each other. I want them to have to mine about it. They need to brute force their ideas. That's what mining is. It is brute forcing to find the best path forward. And I would rather have these things brute forced Rather than we're invading each other's countries or whatever else. Okay, Adam's got a question. I, I got a follow-up after uh, that. Yeah. No, I, I feel like we're learning a lot, but I also think that there's some people that are, because I'm one of them that's like, dude, I, way <laughs> over my head right now here, bro. Straight up. up. Um, so let's bring this down to just regular people out there. Yep. Most people are most people. I say this all the time. I, I gravitate towards personal finance. That's what mm -hmm. I care about. Make your money, save that money, invest that money, yada, yada, yada. Yep. Um, Talk to the regular people out there, the nine to fivers. They're making 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year, whatever is going on. They're getting their paycheck. You know, they're putting their money in their 401k. They're renting. They have a mortgage. They got kids. Yada, 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 freaking yada. And then you're like, bitty bop and bitty cock and bitty da and bitty boop and da 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 Blockchain, it's like pump the brakes for a second, bro. Sure. How does this affect the regular person? The regular person can't afford Bitcoin. Maybe they're buying some Dogecoin and praying. Maybe they're buying some fractionalized shares of Bitcoin. Maybe they're like, look, bro, I see what's going on, NFT. Uh, like, you know, you're familiar with, like, Jump the Shark? Yeah, I had yeah. a buddy out there that all he does is smoke blunts every single day. He hit me up. He's like, bro, what's up with these NFTs? I was like, that's it. I'm out. Okay? <laughs> but right. My question top, to you but... is bring this back to the normal person. Why should they even give a shit about what you're saying? I don't mean that disrespectfully. Sure. But they're just like, look, bro. I just want to make my money. I want to save some money. I want to live my life. You're talking about nodes and nerds and this and that. Just break this down for the regular person out there. What should they be aware of? Mm -hmm. What should they be most, most concerned about? And just yeah, break that down. The first thing is that dollars are a tool for oppression. It's, it's bait. It's, it's sell your time for this. You can't get the time back, but you will get these dollars. And people do that. People work the nine to five, and they're commuting an hour each way, and and, and having their kids and doing. Ninety nine percent of people, not just this is, regular people. Everyone everybody. does that. Yeah. This is essentially everybody. Yeah. But those dollars are losing value as they're sitting in your bank account. Mm -hmm. Inflation's killing our ability to, to, to purchase things. You know, now it, a year ago it was ah, oh, inflation's not a thing. Now it's eh, inflation may, might be good, and here's why. You know, mm -hmm. and so this is something that we are we are. Which is total gaslighting, by the way, what they're doing. They're saying inflation is good. I mean, they, oh, they're, they're just trying to get middle disgusting. America to say, oh, okay, it's not a big deal. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, you've been talking about inflation for six months, man. I mean, you mm-hmm. called it when Janet Yellen was like, it's only 1%. And you're like rolling your eyes. It's a, it's a mess. Four years. It's a major. 6.2%. It's now. a major tool it's usually of usually 2 pressure. to 3%. So it's well, double what it usually it, is. It, it's to make us rely on them. What, yeah. what Bitcoin does fundamentally is it gives us tools that allows me to do business with someone in South Carolina as easily as I can do business with someone in South Korea. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes it that I can bootstrap a business. I can be a fintech startup with a trivial amount of capital as opposed to, all right, I need to write a thing. I need to go to some Silicon Valley venture capital. I mean, like there's a whole, this whole process. But that's not the regular person out there. Remember, we're talking to regular I, people here. We're I not under, talking Silicon under, Valley venture that, capitalists. But th- that's what I'm saying is yeah. that, that that's the silo. That's the silo that a regular person can't ever broach. They can't get there. Okay. But with Bitcoin <laughs> – Excuse me. With Bitcoin, you have the ability to create things of value in an hour's time on your own computer and sell these things for real value. You can do business on the Bitcoin network, much the same way that that the Internet allowed people to maybe create a, an eBay business on the side 15 years ago. Right. Okay. Like, oh, wow, I've got extra income because I figured out that I can go buy you know designer shoes at the resale shop and then sell them for 10x what I bought them for. Right. That was a revolutionary little thing that the internet created for people. But Bitcoin is that much better because you can do it with digital assets. You can tokenize your own, your own home, your own life, futures on your own uh, ability to mm-hmm. earn, things like that. It gives financial instruments that have been kept away from people forever. And it allows them to be in the hands of people to do micro lending. Let's say maybe you've got 50 grand that you've saved up because you've you know kept a bank account for – Mm-hmm. 30 years working at your job. Well, that 50 grand, how can you make that 50 grand work for you? You can leave it in a, an IRA or, or whatever the thing is. I probably got allergies here. But with Bitcoin, he's, he's got cats. It, it, it's, allows, it's... <laughs> it allows you to do uh, micro, this DeFi thing. Like it allows people yeah. to give. I'm going to give a micro loan. I'm going to choose the interest rate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow people to. Grab some tissue, please. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a lender in my neighborhood now. And the on-chain attestation of my identity and my reputation makes it that people can trust me. We can have a smart contract, secure it, and do the escrow and take away all of the nonsense, the stuff that people don't want to know and hear, and say, look, you can earn 6% on your dollar now by lending to people. And, and I, I, I literally t- think that uh, Gerard what I was telling does you this, I do. right? Yeah. You want to tell us what you do? No. Okay. Because <laughs> it's illegal. Have some tissues. Thank you. No, and uh, you get very emotional free, free about Bitcoin. Albert. Is this why you're not? No, it's, I, I, I think let me, it's allergies. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. He was fine for the commie. Asked let me question. read an let me read an article here about BSV because uh, so so Kurt, you know the comments right now are on fire about BSV, right? Oh, I'm and, sure. And, yeah. So they love BSV apparently. I mean, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> so can you pull up this article about what uh, Vitaly had to say? Uh, 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 so uh, a, a Yahoo article, this is two years old, though. This is not a new article. It's two years old. Ethereum's Vitalik Buterin slams Bitcoin SV. Obviously a complete scam. If you can go up a little bit, Ethereum Vitalik maintained his hardline stance on Bitcoin uh, uh, SV. In a recent interview, Colin Craig, Craig writes, cryptocurrency, a complete scam. Speaking with YouTube articles, a little room for interpretation regarding his thoughts on BSV. The Ethereum co- co-founder also gave his thoughts on decentralized exchanges and the worryingly centralized accumulation of power by uh, uh, Binance, go a little lower. Obviously, BSV is a complete scam, but the, the delisting from Binance, that was interesting. There's arguments in favor of it, but then there's also an argument that this is a centralized exchange that's wielding a lot of power. Uh, what, what do you have to say about his thoughts against BSV? I mean, we're, we, BSV makes Ethereum completely obsolete. So I mentioned Ethereum is good for 15. DSV makes Ethereum completely obsolete. Completely. Ethereum is good for 15 transactions per second globally, and it does smart contracts that cost sometimes $800 a transaction just to make a wallet or just to do all these different things. Which would obviously concern our friend Vitalik. There is is no scaling ceiling on BSV. Zero. In fairness, Ethereum was never intended to be a transactable currency or an investment. You know what? If you go look at Vitalik Buterin quotes from 2017, he was the one talking about that it's a travesty that BTC fees are over $5 or whatever. He's like, oh, no, that could never be disruptive. And now... You know, literally eight hundred dollars to make an Ethereum wallet if you're trying to open a DeFi contract, and it's it's madness. But on BSV, you can do about a hundred thousand transactions per second today. Full smart contracts, everything that Ethereum can do can be done for an infinitesimal fraction of the cost and at exponentially higher speed than Ethereum. 
And that's why BSV is a scam in his opinion. Mm. People don't want to hear it. The reason it's been delisted from Binance and from all these other places is because the entire crypto economy, all 10,000 of these blockchains, some days BSV has more transactions on just BSV than the entire rest of the blockchain economy combined. Nobody talks about it, and it's because it's their Ponzi scheme. They're making money by trading tokens and by accruing this liquidity. What BSV does is not about crypto trading. That's not the thing here. What it is is it is disrupting the entire global economy. We don't want to replace the blockchain economy. We want to replace the internet, period. Do you think those blockchains are going to consolidate at some point? They have to. They yeah. don't work. Like mm -hmm. They literally need to bring whatever value is on those blockchains needs to come to BSV because the other blockchains don't work. They can't scale. People don't get it. L2, all this layer two nonsense. Four years ago, Ethereum's, oh, Plasma's going to fix everything. Plasma never came out. It can't work. Elon Moist just came in. So he's in He's in the chat. He's watching the, uh, no, no, I'm it's being my, serious. This boy. is CEO of a, a BSV. He's the, a Twitch guy, the right? Frog, yeah. Right. yeah, the frog. So he came in and he says, Bitcoin does the work of 100,000 bankers per second. Yep. What does he mean by that? <laughs> that it's everything. B Bitcoin is Bitcoin is a, is a global notary. It is a, it is a global group of bankers. It is a global uh, data attestation service. Mm -hmm. It is the internet. Yeah. That's the thing. Everything you can do if, if you want it's to. It's the deed. You buy a car with Bitcoin and it is your deed. The coin it's, is. It's everything. Yeah. Every single piece of ownership, identity, and transaction, period, can can happen on BSV. If, if we were to move the entire global economy to a blockchain today, it would have to be BSV. Mm -hmm. It could not be done on another blockchain, period. So, Chamath says two hundred thousand by the end of the next year. What do you think? I, I think he's a madman. I, I think I think he's. A, here's the thing. It could be if it, if it does, it'll be because it's the it's the inflation meme. It's the problem he's of inflation. He's a brilliant guy. Sure, but he's been wrong before. Yeah, his so SPAC. Uh, I don't think it'll be so good that will <laughs> primarily if. If, if that's the case, if it's the case, it'll be primarily an indicator for how bad the economy has gotten. It will not be because of value that was created by so that really, blockchain. So, so it's, a, it's, is, a hedge against, it's a hedge against hyperinflation. It is the only thing that people are using it for. That's it. Are you familiar with this Bitcoin rainbow? No, I don't think so. You're what not. Is what is it? Okay. I mean, maybe. Pull it maybe up. maybe Pull I know it up. by a Pull different name. What are we Tyler. talking about? It's called the Bitcoin rainbow. Only, oh, only you would know something let's, about Bitcoin. Let's hear this it. This isn't right. a gay pride thing. No, no, it's I'm not, not saying a, that. It's just like Bitcoin, Bitcoin rainbow price You got a hundred questions to ask about oh, okay. Bitcoin rainbow. Because right, this so. is essentially the predictor. Of what's going to happen? Uh, yes. All right. Okay. So Got what's it. it telling us? Yeah. Yeah. You've never seen this? I, I have see seen it. this. I, okay, I, I, okay. Okay. All of a sudden, I'm teaching you something. It's, it's there, <laughs> Bitcoin guy. Bitcoin <laughs> rainbow says right. what? Basically, says, this is exactly like it's sort of like the the teacher's manual this is insane. Tell me why we shouldn't laugh at whoever made this. <laughs> Seriously. Like, look at this. What is this? I, I don't know, but apparently it works. <laughs> no, what it, what it is is you overlay it on something that exists. Like, this didn't exist 10 years ago. Somebody put this together a couple years ago at the very It was Adam's boy. Yeah, it was me. Blood. It was, I did it. I spoke Blood was like, this, this, yeah, this shit looks God. like and a rainbow. So this, this, is this is not a predictor. Any rational person should look at this and laugh. Like, what is it even telling us? We're in, well, we're I think we can all agree <laughs> that the word rational is a very loose terminology these days with the metaverse and the NFTs and, and the a, bitcoins and the bitty bobs. None of this problem. is rational, bro. That, that indicates that we are in a bubble that will crash. Okay, let's talk That's about it. that. What's this bubble? You hear the Bitcoin bubble, the crypto bubble, the Dogecoin bubble. What's the bubble? It's the same reason people don't work at the at the burger stand anymore either. It's the same reason there's supply shortages everywhere. It's the same reason we can't get port workers to to unload however you know, half a million ships or whatever that are off the coast of California. It's because the entire economy is broken. The entire economy is slowing down. It is fundamentally changing in ways that are not good. Okay. And it's because people are being paid to be lazy. Right. And it's the exact same thing they're doing with cryptocurrency. They look at it and they're like, oh, well, I mean, you just buy this thing. You may never have to work again. Like, buy Shiba Inu coin. And, and okay. here it is. Man. Yeah. And it's like, okay, what does Shiba do? Who is what? What economic utility is being unlocked by Shiba Inu coin? What do any of these coins do, for that matter? Nothing. The answer is nothing, it's, and that's the so problem. So are you basically predicting a crypto crash? Yes, it's all nonsense. Okay. <laughs> but, but, well, I mean, you're the, the Bitcoin guy. So, like, the fact that you're saying that, the fact that you're saying that crypto is all nonsense, alarm bells should be going off right now. Well, well, no? he, has to be, he, 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 so, so you have to know that if Pomp was sitting here right now, 
we would have to separate them because <laughs> they have complete opposite, you know. Because uh, Pomp uh, is a Bitcoin loyalist, right? Uh, and, and he may be one of the best uh, explainers of Bitcoin out there. When I listen to Pomp, I say, yeah. I walk away saying, okay, cool. You know, so his position is a different position than a Pomp. Then a shum- then there's a lot yes. of this. Again, go back to the it's religion civil part. War Can you put up this question somebody just asked? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this. And we're going to change the subject and go into Jack Dorsey and a few other guys. And maybe we'll talk about uh, some more about this Bitcoin rainbow. But go go to what I just sent you. Uh, uh, I don't know if you see it or not. I'm trying uh, trying to get it over. Just give me a second. Trying to get okay. it over. Okay. All right. So, anyways, I'll read it to you while he's trying to uh, figure this out, Tyler. So, uh, John Pitts. At Equity Diamonds. I don't know if you know who he is or not. I do. Okay, you know who he is. He asks, number one question, how would BDO, an audit firm which relies on its integrity, minutes, which are independently produced, CSV has no control, not be a smoking gun that CSV equals SN? Can you unpack that question for us and then answer that? Then I got a follow-up. Second question for you. This is strictly for the Bitcoin community. Yep. How so, would you respond to that? So I've been in court. Can you uh, unpack his question, by the way, so to the audience? This is from the, the Climb and Write trial. I have been at every single day, every single minute of this trial, okay. taking notes and doing a live stream every evening for it. So uh, there might not be – well, there's one other guy who, who is probably equally expertise on this, and uh, it's my buddy Pat. But um, there was a piece of evidence admitted <laughs> – my buddy Pat Thompson. But, okay, that's <laughs> so, my buddy Pat. Yeah. Um, Craig Wright gave a piece of evidence that was minutes on BDO letterhead from 2007. This is about a year before the Bitcoin white paper came out. And it was explaining uh, time chain P2P cash system and, and, and giving a timeline of when he wants to do these things and whether or not BDO wants to invest in this idea and make it a BDO product, Bitcoin, as a commercial, essentially triple entry accounting system which would be great for BDO in theory, okay. but they didn't understand the, the opportunity. So basically what it is, is this is proof of about a year before Bitcoin released of Craig Wright showing BDO what is essentially Bitcoin and explaining, all right, we'll release the white paper in Q3 of 2008. We'll get the software done and tested you know, during this timeline. We'll try to release by early 2009. And, uh, and there's a, a guy named Alan Granger, who's some kind of executive at, at BDO in Australia, basically signing off on it. And it was going to be green lighted, except the economy collapsed and ultimately uh, research and development projects and stuff ended up getting booted. In fact, Craig also got let go from the BDO uh, just a few months later, not for malfeasance, but simply because, hey, we're letting a bunch of people go because of the economy. So this is why Bitcoin became Satoshi Nakamoto project instead of Bitcoin trademark, a BDO product. <laughs> so um, I, I think it's a, a very compelling piece of evidence. I think it's a piece of evidence that people were not expecting. Uh, and people want to write it off. And they're like, oh, it's a handwritten note. It could have come from any time, anywhere. But it's, well, but it's on BDO letterhead and, and, and time stamped and all these things. So uh, I think it's a major smoking gun, a major bombshell. And another piece of evidence of, of Craig Wright, for which I saw about a thousand pieces of, of evidence that um, that basically couldn't point to anything else. So to answer your question from probably an hour ago, why, why Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto? If Craig Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto, he's been pretending to be since about two years before Bitcoin existed <laughs> and doing almost nothing else with his time. It just wouldn't make any, he wouldn't have time to do anything else. And so- How'd you answer the second question? If Bitcash Bitcoin email from 2008 is indeed a fraud, as CSV, CSV equals Craig Wright, right? As CSV proves CSW, CSW, yeah. CSW yeah. how does Kleiman have a case at all? I, I personally don't think Kleiman has a case at all. Okay. It, it doesn't make sense to me. The, the, the whole thing is, is predicated on Craig Wright being a bad man and trying to get money for the estate, the way that I see it. I, I think it's a giant money Anyone grab. going to jail? Absolutely. It's a civil, no, it's no a civil case. Civil no, case. it's a civil case. And no. also in a civil case, though, you don't need all 12 jurors to agree. It's only, yeah. it's, it, you only need uh, a majority. So a- FYI for the audience that's, li- that's listening to this, a lot of people are asking me about having John E. Deaton on. Just so you know, he's the founder of Crypto Law. Dot US and uh, he's a uh, uh, lawyer uh, um, known in the crypto community. We are having conversations about having him on the podcast, and we'll talk about what's going on with the case. So I know people are asking about it. Him and I have started communicating in the last week or so. So we'll let you know when that does take place. Okay, having said that, let's get right into a couple topics that we got here. Uh, I'll give you a few names in your world, and yep. you just give me one word or any thoughts you have on these names. Curious sure. to know what your idea, uh, thoughts are going to be. So number one, uh, Pompliano, Anthony. 
<laughs> never, never saw an opportunity that he didn't want to ride. Okay, Brian Armstrong. Uh, similar, yeah. Oh. He's uh, Brian Armstrong. I, I think is a guy who was Bitcoin only until the moment it became inconvenient, and then he just did what the money told him. To. Uh, by the way, for people that don't know, it's Coinbase, right? CEO he's the, and founder of Coinbase. Coinbase. Yeah, Vitalik Buterin. Uh, in, interesting character. I, I think he's also very much in it for the money. He he knows his stuff doesn't scale. He's even admitted his stuff doesn't scale on stage. And um, he's here for the money. He's he's here to make money. Okay. I'm going to have a hard time. I'm going to butcher this name. Juchika Chow. A chicken. I don't even. Okay. I will go to the next one. Jack Dorsey. Uh, Jack Dorsey is a communist who thinks he's a libertarian. <laughs> okay. I mean, try to not hold back a little bit if you will. Yeah. Terry, Terry Duffy. Terry Duffy? I don't know Terry Duffy. Jamie Dimon. Uh, from J.P. Morgan? Yeah. Um, I don't know. He's okay. a bank CEO. What is there to say about him? <laughs> Char- Charlie Lee. Uh, total scammer. If, if you look into Charlie Lee, Charlie Lee is an insider manipulator to the core. Wow. Period. You just pissed off another group of people that are not going to be happy with you. Yeah. Naval Ravikant. Uh. I, I like his tweets. I think he used to be a lot better a few years ago. I think I think he's running out of axioms. <laughs> I'll ask you, Craig Wright. You've already said stuff about Craig Wright, but Craig Wright, uh, a gigantic pain in the ass, and also Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay, Elizabeth Rosiello. Don't know. Her. Don't know. Barry Silbert. <laughs> uh, Barry Silbert is one of the heads of the beast that is there to completely strangle out. Um, what Bitcoin was designed to do, and he's, he's doing it all for money. And if you look at his board of directors, it's all people from the World Bank and the Clinton Foundation and a bunch of stuff pretending to be disruptive, cool, you know, Bitcoin people, and they're not. They're a bunch of nasty, nasty insider Bureau- banker types. Damn. Okay, Elizabeth Stark, Lightning Labs. Um, she's a fall person. <laughs> okay, Brad Garlinghouse. Uh, Brad's a brilliant CEO, and I think he's also a, a, a piece of trash. But I, I think he, I think he does a great. <laughs> I think so. It's a brilliant piece of trash. I like that. Well, hey, he can is, we it, make sure we escort this guy out yeah. when he leaves? Like, he cannot come in the XRP, car. So here's the thing: XRP is is 100 the only thing that Ripple Labs does. They would not have revenue if it wasn't for pumping XRP. So he's a brilliant CEO in that he's figured out ways to make you know people in that company some of the I richest people billion in the world. So that's what I mean. He's a brilliant CEO, yeah. but his company actually does nothing but put out press releases about, hey, we're doing this thing with Western Union. We're yeah. doing none of it actually exists. He also you got to give him credit. He went. He tried to. He was the very first guy that went head to head with the U.S. dollar. He was like, yeah, let's do it. He's a, he's a mixed bag. Do you remember Brad? Yeah. But he is he is not he is not a disruptor. He is he is there to make money for Ripple, period. So when people and and people know this at the Miami <laughs> Miami party we went, to, I'll tell you about after. The XR- Mark, Mark Cuban. Uh, I, I don't like Mark Cuban at all. I I, I used to until I, I don't. He's he's just another opportunist. Like would I accept money from him with a lot of strings attached? Maybe, but <laughs> Vili Ledon Virta. Don't know. Okay, Paul Leroux. <laughs> uh, Paul Rose in prison for human trafficking and gun smuggling. Uh, it's a gigantic piece of human trash. I, I hope he gets the chair at some point. <laughs> Gavin Anderson. G- Gavin Andreessen? Yeah. Uh, Gavin is way too nice to have been involved in Bitcoin and let himself be manipulated by way too many people. But I think he's a good man. You Hal met him. How Finney. I haven't met him, oh, unfortunately. How Finney. Uh, it, Brilliant programmer, uh, very cool guy, an actual libertarian, by the way. Uh, I, I like Hal Finney. Uh, wrong about Bitcoin, and ultimately uh, not not Satoshi. A lot of people think Hal Finney is Satoshi. I don't think. Well, because he died uh, what five years ago? Two thousand plus? Thirteen, okay. I think. Maybe and so. 14. That, that's sort of like the Kaiser Soze approach. And he yeah. had uh, ALS, I want to say, yep. and a- Shamat. Shamat. Yeah. I, I don't know. Oh, you know who he is. So it's okay. Nick, Shemat, Nick Zabo. <laughs> Zabo, uh, Zabo's another guy. Zabo's also actually a libertarian, but I think he's 100% wrong about Bitcoin. I think he's been wrong about cryptocurrency for a very long time, actually. He created a, a precursor to Bitcoin that failed because it didn't make any sense. And he keeps trying to turn Bitcoin into that thing because that will vindicate him. I think he's trying to get back the thing that he lost 20 years ago. Dave so, Kleiman, last one. Years ago. 
Uh, Dave, Cl so Dave Kleiman died in 2013. Also, nobody in the space ever really met him. I, is from being in this case and hearing all of his stories, Dave Kleiman seems like he was probably one of the nicest people to have had in your life. And he died tragically, and in a way that uh, makes me really emote for Dave Kleiman. So he seemed seemed like a hell of a guy, but. Uh, He's no longer with us. What would you say if we were reading this list and your name popped up? What would you want to be known for? Oh, no, what what, would, what would others say yeah. about our buddy Kurt here? I think people that know me in real life know that uh, you know I'm I'm the guy you can call at 2 a.m. in an emergency, and and people who know me know they can sleep on my couch or that I'm good for uh, good for all kinds of nonsense when people need uh, need someone to help them through their 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 personal stuff. Uh, my enemies, people who don't know me, will say that I'm for sale and I'll say anything that I, you know, <laughs> will earn me a buck. But uh, as you guys can see, I, I say what's on my mind. I say what I think about powerful people. And I think it's crucial to know what you believe and why over and above what you do not believe and why you don't believe it and be, be happy to talk about cool. it. By the way, if you said you got that couch, it, it, hopefully it's a big couch because if anybody here called you, it, we would, it wouldn't work. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big guy, so I have a big yeah, couch. Well, that's so. good. Okay, so let's get into some of these stories. So Jack Dorsey, first one, t Twitter CEO, stepping down, uh, officially steps down with his role, effective immediately. Dorsey co-founded Twitter with Evan Williams, Biz Stone, and Noah Glass back in 2006 and served as a CEO until 2008. He later returned to the CEO role in 2015, and former CEO Dick uh, Costello stepped down. He has a net worth of approximately $11.8 billion. There's a lot of talk about the importance of a company being founder-led, Dorsey said in an email to employees. Ultimately, I believe that severely uh, limiting and a single point of failure. I've worked hard to ensure this company can break away from its founding and founders. Dorsey will be replaced by Twitter CTO Parag Agarwal. Uh, your thoughts on this move taking place yesterday? So I think Dorsey's hated that company for about 10 years now. Why do you say that? <laughs> Why do you say that? He, I mean, he's at odds with the company. Like, here's the thing. I, I said before, he's a, he's a communist who thinks he's a libertarian. And so he's got this major conflict in that, you know, he quotes Mises and talks about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But but ultimately, the, the behavior of things, like, it's one thing to be, you know, hey, let's, let's, let's talk about sound money. And then, but actually, I've got this platform that's known for its political censorship and, and, and for doing what the the Communist Party in China asks for when when necessary, and, and and these different things, and it's like if you don't behave the same on Friday night as you do on Sunday morning, then I don't like you as a person well, fundamentally. In fairness, and not not that I I make you know not that I want to be the guy defending Jack Dorsey here, but if you believe what Joe Rogan has to say, he's been advocating for free speech on Twitter, and he's been overruled by his own board for years, so much so that he tried to do a spinoff called like Twitter Dark or something like that, where it was basically going to be a you know twitter and 4chan where anything goes free speech upvoting system um and he was again he, he was denied by his board so i mean if you believe that story this is a guy who's been eaten by his own success he doesn't even have the say in his own company i don't know man when, when you're the captain of a ship you if the ship gets out of control i think that's your fault like at, at mm -hmm. what point were the decisions made that allowed a bunch of nasty social justice warriors to be in charge of the whole company like these are these are a lot of little decisions that led to that at some point, mm -hmm. and so I, I think he's got to own that. And and I really I think that's a lot of lip service because I think in theory he doesn't want to lose his street cred as like the cool guy with a nose ring in Silicon who's, Valley, right? It's just the whole thing mm -hmm. is like, well, I'm I'm going to be this this disruptive libertarian guy, but I'm also mm -hmm. very San Francisco and and everything else. And it's just it just they can't be both. And uh -huh. he, he didn't choose, so he's he's been riding the fence for a decade trying to make Twitter. Outside of Twitter, he has a chance to make it right, though, which I, I, I'm excited for Jack Dorsey's second act. If if he can come out and do what he wanted to do, if, if there's a, a chance to do a secondary you know, social media channel that, that promotes free speech, he can, he can save his legacy. And we'll see. Well, I don't know. The, the thing that he pretty much put out there, and I, my question is how big of a concern is making money to him or increasing his net worth? Because I think his net worth is, what, $12 billion, mm -hmm. somewhere around that? And he said that he wanted his sole focus now to be on Square. And obviously, everything that Square is doing in the crypto space, and it's going to be backed by Bitcoin. And, I mean, he – Twitter, I think, is down double digits percentages a year. He looks at someone like Zuck, who's worth over $100 billion. They're up 20% this year. And he looks at Square and says, that's a better opportunity to make more money. Yep. How, how much of a motivation is this to basically increase his net worth? I, it, it's hard to know. I, I think Square 
you know, Square's a big proponent of the Lightning Network and, and the whole BTC narrative. They're part of what's called the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, which I think is another nasty cabal of people that just want to control things. Similar, like connected to the Barry Silbert people and all of this. Like, there's a group of people that want to, again, pretend that they're disruptors, pretend that they're libertarians, pretend that they're going to do all these big things. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's like, yeah, but everybody behind me, like, yeah, I'm going to lunch with world bankers and and, and doing all this other stuff. And really, it's I, I think it's a LARP. I think the whole thing is like, look, man, I'm cool. You can you can use Square mm -hmm. and pretend it's Bitcoin and, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Like, but keep using Square yeah. here. It's I, I think he's a but money also, man. All of our employees are going to have critical theory training. And yeah, Exa yeah right. Yeah. I have so, a question so, for so you. Let me, so let me tell you. Let me tell you what I just did right now. While you guys were going out, I was doing a little bit of research. Hey, can you uh, uh, pull up this article? Type in Jack Dorsey says Trump's Twitter ban was right decision. This is an NPR <laughs> article. I want to read this to you, and then I want to answer a question about what you said and what you said mm -hmm. that you guys uh, uh, made me uh, think Trump, uh, Trump's Trump. Thrumos, uh, Donald <laughs> Thrumos from uh, Paris. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice, a nice Greek it is. boy. Yeah, right there. All right, so check this out. So you just said, you just said, uh, you brought up, uh, 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 you know, him, uh, you know, he's the captain of the ship. He's got this option, all this other stuff. And you said Rogan, et cetera, et cetera. He says, yeah. look, I'd love to have some kind of a second option. You know, Twitter, and I remember when that conversation took mm -hmm. place. Uh, what percentage of Twitter do you think he owns? I don't even know. I want you to guess it. I want you to guess what percentage do you think he owns? If I had to spitball, I'd probably say 20 or 30%. 30%. 30%. Okay, yeah. cool, 20 or 30%. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think he owns? I'd say a little less than that. I'd okay, so here's what 15%. I want you to type. I want you to type Jack Dorsey, total shares of Twitter. And look what comes up. You guys are all going to be shell-shocked. <laughs> Jack Dorsey, total shares of Twitter. Okay, Twitter. Twitter. There you go. Ready? 22 million shares, which is only 3% of Twitter. 3%. He's a nobody. So here's what this means when you're 3%. Okay, Steve Jobs got fired, even yep. though he owned most shares. Yep. When he got a board, the board is a board. You ain't got nothing. You Listen, you, you can be whoever you are. So for us to go that position, I don't think he has as much influence as you think he does to do what he did with Trump or all this other stuff. He may have an opinion. I don't think it's a good idea. But the board is going to – I'm in these board meetings all the time, and believe me, I kind of know how sure. these things work. So now go to the other article, what he said about Trump. So uh, uh, so uh, Jack Dorsey was, uh, uh, says Trump's Twitter ban was right decision but worries about president. So go down and see what he tweets out. He says, I do not celebrate or feel pride in having uh, uh, to ban uh, – Donald Trump for Twitter or how we got here. After a clear warning, we take the, uh, this action. We, we, the board, made a decision with the best information we had based on threats to physical safety both on and off Twitter. Was this correct? And he opens it up and people are going back and forth. Yes, no, maybe, whatever. Now, deep down inside, did he want to take him off or on? I don't know. Uh, did it make sense to do it or not? I don't know. Uh, was most of his board probably an anti-Trump board? I would be willing to bet 99% of the board can't stand Trump. I don't think they're going to have a, you know, for example, Kellyanne Conway sits on Twitter's board. That's probably not going to be happening anytime soon, yeah. or Ted Cruz, or any of those guys, right? So is there a part of it where... You know, uh, he, the guy's got a difficult job. They started a company that, to be honest with you, is probably one of the most powerful companies that determine elections. Uh, you go immediately to find out what debates are taking place, issues taking place, immediate reaction. It's a very, very it's kind powerful. of the pulse of America, right? I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's a pretty powerful company. You know, Trump wouldn't become a president without Twitter. Mm -hmm. Take Twitter out. Trump's not the president, just so you know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If Twitter's not there, Trump's not the president. Hillary Clinton's the president. So. For the people that hate him as much as they do, you may want to thank Twitter because without Twitter, there is no Trump. Hillary Clinton would have been your president. That's one part. Now, what he does next, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, whether he is a communist, whether he's a libertarian, I have no idea uh, what next moves he's going to make. I, 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 the real question now becomes who's the next guy taking over and who sits on Twitter's board. Can you pull up who sits on Twitter's board? Well, it's interesting that you say, you know, that uh, he was a nobody, too, because his first time on Rogan, it was really off-putting. I forget her name. There was a woman, very, very intelligent woman, but it was very clear that she knew the day-to-day -day operations of oh, what yeah. was going on behind the scenes and the decisions yeah. being made, and he didn't. He kept deferring to her to answer Rogan's questions. Okay, so Because well, he on, wasn't the CEO for, like, five click years. On, all right, so check this out. So here's uh, the board. Of Twitter, Brett Taylor, independent board chair, president and chief operating officer, Salesforce. Okay, cool. So that's from Salesforce. Salesforce is Mark Benioff. Mark Benioff bought Time Magazine. Uh, that's an anti-Trump guy. That's a liberal left side. 
Parag Agarwal, we know what position he's at now and where he was at politically. He is not necessarily the biggest supporter of freedom of speech. I don't know if you guys seen what he tweeted out about freedom of speech. Have you seen what he said about freedom yeah. of speech? He uh, He's conflicted with freedom of speech. He doesn't think it needs to be as open as possible. You may want to pull up his name, type in Parag Agarwal, tweet freedom That's of speech. It's kind of not a gray area conversation. You're either for freedom of speech or you're not uh, for freedom, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech yeah. tweet. Speech tweet. Uh, uh, pull that up. So this is the board. Okay, go... Drones on drones one set to company. Okay, there you go. Click on that one right there. Fox Business, the bottom. Uh, uh, he says right one said uh, not to be bound by. Phone. Okay, keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Uh, 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 go up a little bit higher till we find a tweet. Uh, okay. Keep going higher. See if we can. Three uh, percent. Uh, all right. Go back and just go to images. Go back and type in images. It'll come up if you type in images. Uh, no. yeah, he said so. If okay, they are not going to make a distinction between Muslims and extremists, then why should I distinguish between white people and racists? That's a this little bit concerning, <laughs> by the way, right? So click on that. Classy. Click on that. Uh, click on that. <laughs> That's a little bit concerning. If they are not going to make a distinction between Muslims and extremists, then why should I distinguish between white people and racists? So the verdict is still out. We don't know who this guy is. Anyways, the board yeah. chose him. Jack Dorsey did not choose him. The board chose him. Now, Jack says in his email, this was my first option as well. This is who I wanted. He's my first-round draft pick. Go back to the board of Twitter. I'm actually just curious right now at this point on who sits on the board. So then you got Mimi, Senior Vice President, uh, Private um, Partnership at MasterCard. Okay, cool. Jack okay. Dorsey, got it. Which, by the way, in May, he's stepping down from the board as well. Uh, Co-CEO at Silver Lake. You know, 100 Jefferson. Lucky Voice Group, former co-founder, manager, and director, and last minute. Who cool, got it? Uh, no, former, he's a executive, former executive chairman of Twitter. Cool. Professor at Stanford. Makes sense. Good university. General part in Vineyards. Born in at Beijing, Google. China, by the way, Faithy Lee. Who's at Faithy Lee? Yep. Makes sense. CEO for some of that, Inc. Uh, former chairman and board of directors at uh, Alliance Bernstein Holding Company. Okay, so that's hmm. who. How makes. many people in total? Uh, I, I think it's it's either nine or eleven. Go up. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine. Okay. Is there uh, how many is it important to distinguish between nine versus eleven versus seven? No, Does it make a difference? Your, three, five, 15? seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. It's it's whatever the odd number. It's always an odd number. Has to. Though. It can't how be does even. somebody yeah. give up ninety-seven percent of their company? That's like that's that's if money. you keep raising that's a lot of money. Well, you have to know. Here's a question yeah. for you: What is the business model for Twitter to make money? You actually think, how many times have you spent money on Twitter? It's only advertisers. Yep. Okay, so you have to know the business model isn't really a business model. Just like, assume they're selling information. You need a lot of money. They need data. a lot of money. So Data, the new currency. To sustain, like what do you think YouTube was sold for? Do you know what YouTube was sold for? No, it was seven, billion dollars. Seven, wasn't, I thought it was more. It One was like, billion dollars. Oh. It's a billion Same or as two billion dollars. So because YouTube eventually got so big where the guys didn't have advertising figured out, you don't have capacity for servers it keeps crashing so you're like dude i'm gonna go raise some money you can't afford to do this anymore so i'm not surprised he's worth three percent so jack dorsey is not as influential as people think within twitter community that's the point i'm trying to make with or, or so the bigger lesson is the, the the founder is not as influential as as you would assume D it depends right? at what well, he, phase he at what be. phase it really depends yeah. it depends on the company yeah. structure and why it grew into what it did I mean, this is this is why I would I would again put the put the pressure back on Jack Dorsey though and say hey man the company looks the way it looks because of your executive leadership over the last 15ish mm -hmm. years you know like that's again yeah. <laughs> no, Ru no like, nobody to your point, is Russ saying, Albrook has never sold a drug in his life but he created a platform where people yep. sold drugs and arms and now he's spending the rest of his life exactly. in jail so. yeah nobody's saying the onus isn't on him yeah you know like yesterday I'm talking to Jack Carr I don't know if you know who Jack Carr is mm -hmm. the Navy SEAL who mm -hmm. wrote all those books New York Times bestsellers and I asked him a question I said okay so we talked about Afghanistan I said here's a question for you I said take the general of the army the general Air Force, the general Marines. The ge take all the main generals of whatever the four branches are that we have, right? And the president, commander-in-chief, says, let's get out of Afghanistan, okay? You're on the ground, and you're saying, this ain't the right strategy, right? There's no way this is the right move we're making. We're going to leave all this shit to the Taliban. They're going to come and ruin people's lives here in Afghanistan. 20 years we've been working here. But you got to follow orders. I said, but here's the question. No, no, that's not the question. The question is, 
those you, nobody becomes the general of the Army, Marines, Air Force, or Navy, and you don't have a strong personality. Mm-hmm. Nobody. And by the way, the general of any of these organizations, it's not like you're a yes man person, right? Let me sit there and say, hey, I'm sorry, guys. This is a shitty strategy. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to yeah. push back. Hey, President, this is not yeah. a good move. I'm telling you, my suggestion is we do this, right? There's got to be pushback. You're there. You know more than the president does. You're trying to tell him here's not the right move, right? Okay. So, but the president says what? Here's what we're doing. To me, this becomes like who is really running a company on Twitter? Mm-hmm. Is it the generals running it? In this instance, if you see Twitter's interview with Jack and the mm-hmm. other lady that was there, it seemed like uh, the operator, operators are running it. Jack's not really as involved. He was more the figurehead. So sometimes you're more distant. You no longer have the kind of influence that you had. You just kind of are uh, there on the board because you have certain special information that maybe others don't have. But you kind of like, listen... Uh, it's cool, Jack. And Jack's more saying, what are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking? Right, I don't know what to do. So I don't know. I don't know how much of it is him running it. I think uh, this was kind of coming. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what this guy does next. He's definitely not going to be going away, I don't think. But we'll see. Anyways, let's go to the next story here. Uh, you guys saw what Mr. Beast did. I don't know if you saw that or not. YouTube star Mr. Beast created a real-life squid game set and had people compete for $456,000, which is ridiculous. If you haven't seen this video, within four days, the video got 100 million views in four days. Now, here's a budget that they had. Can we play any of it? No, no? we cannot. No, we cannot. YouTube star Mr. Beast shared his recreation of Squid Game, which included full-scale sets. You can put up the images so people can see it. Costumes that look just like the ones in the show and a total cost. You ready? Three and a half million dollars to create the exact set. This is uh, Squid Game, Netflix's most watched show of all time. is a Korean drama series about a group of morally gray characters who took part in children's games and deadly twists in order to win enough money to pay their debts. Everyone in this video game wore costumes inspired by the show, including Mr. Beast, who was wearing the game Master's Black Clothing. Mr. Beast said $3.5 million was spent on a real-life Squid Game, which was partly sponsored by video game Brawl Stars. He said on that uh, he spent around $2 million to build and produce a $1.5 million in prizes. For the recreation, FYI, you saw the tweet uh, uh, Kai sent us to us yesterday. Mm-hmm. He said Squid Game got some 85 million viewers that yeah. watch it on Netflix or whatever it is. Yep. He said <laughs> Mr. Beast got 20 million more viewers yeah. than the show did. It's trying to towards 150. Which is pretty intense yeah. craziness when you yeah. think about that. What are your thoughts on that? I think Mr. Beast is he knows his audience probably better than almost anybody in the space. He's incredible at understanding his audience and he has a great team around him that's able to, you know, capitalize on the moment. You would think like, you know, Squid Game, when you do these kind of meme things, you got to be like right off the way. We were like cuz Squid Game was a story weeks ago. But for him to do it, it was also the way that they pulled it off. If you watched it, it was incredible, man. I mean, like they actually Did you watch his video? Yeah, it was Did incredible. I Kurt, haven't seen his also, video. Also, no. I'm going to state for the record: Squid Game remarkably overrated. <laughs> Communist propaganda. Anybody old enough to have ever seen, uh, you know, Running Man understands the concept. Yeah. I mean, this was, but but that's neither here nor there. Mr. Beast, you are indeed a beast. Incredible. Now, my big question becomes from a from a philosophical standpoint. I don't. I, 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 I can save it. I can save it for go. off the air. Save it for off the go. air. But why? How, how much money do you think he made off of that 150 million viewers? And is it better to have a, a subscription model with paying viewers as opposed to an ad revenue? Here, here's the, that's a great question, and we can kind of transition that into Mafia States of America. This is what most people don't understand when it comes down to YouTube and AdSense, right? So, what he produces is a hundred percent qualified for AdSense, mm-hmm. which means what? Per million views, he'll make, you know, eight to twelve thousand dollars. Probably, probably a lot less, to be honest with you, because well, the heavy, heavy demogra- the demographics of his worldwide audience, the CPMs are going to be way less. Well, but in U.S., let's just say, so let's just say it's seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Put it at seven thousand per million views. Yeah, seven thousand dollars per million views. Here's the thing: way less say, money than people think. By the way, say, say we do Mafia States of America. What do you think the AdSense is on that? What, what do you think the AdSense is on that? Nothing. Do you know why? Who the hell wants to advertise a coffee company on a mafia, uh, you know, killing Cursing, each other? I killed killing, 19 people. Yeah. You know what? Pfizer's going to endorse their vaccine on our, on our <laughs> video. You know, oh, Ford's going to come and advertise. That is the part where people don't realize how AdSense works. He's got an AdSense machine going on right mm-hmm. now. He's crushing it, doing a great job at it. More power to him. Love seeing what is taking place. I spoke at a school two weeks ago or whatever it was Veterans Day. I don't know what Veterans Day was a couple weeks ago. 
I can't tell you how many kids today who are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a YouTuber. YouTuber. I can't even tell you. Uh, can you imagine us growing up? What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a cat guy. You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> I want to be whatever. Today, I want to yeah. be a YouTuber. So that leads me to Adam's favorite story, which is very yeah. important for us to cover. Woman allegedly breastfeeds cat on Delta <laughs> Airlines. Okay. Yeah. By the way, this is not a satire Adam story. Adam founder. <laughs> this Adam is not. I thought. Uh, I thought we agreed not to. Uh, Pat, I thought we agreed not to cover the Madonna story. <laughs> 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 FYI, this is a Newsweek story. Yeah. Th this is not Onion. This is not like uh, Babylon Beat. This is Newsweek, credible newspaper. Woman on recent Delta Airlines flight allegedly began breastfeeding her cat. Uh, a pet uh, mid-flight and refused to stop after getting caught. The image circulating online describes, by the way, can you pull up this image? Uh, the supposed <laughs> event in what appears to be a screen capture of a message sent U.S. aircraft communications addressing the reporting system, which pilots used to transmit short text-based messages to the ground. The message reports that a passenger in C-13A is breastfeeding cat and will not put cat back <laughs> in carrier. In response to a request from a flight attendant, the message asked that the situation be addressed by the airline's red code team upon landing Delta describes uh, uh, members of the team as elite airport customer service experts who are specially trained to handle on-the-stop customer issues. And now, how do you train this? How do you say, well, guys, if you ever <laughs> well, are... Well, let me explain working... <laughs> how that works, Pat. Let me, how do you train this? Uh, let me take it over from here, buddy. How do you train this? <laughs> Tell us. Since you breastfeed your cat. I don't know if you know that, but men... <laughs> Men also have nipples there so, as well. That so you got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? All I'm saying is Let's this is go, my kind of lady. Uh, this is the type of lady that I meet at the cat conference that I go to when I was in here Can a few weeks ago. somebody find this girl, by the and way? Somebody just, find this girl. All I want to say, she was in 13A. I wish I was in 13B. We would have, we would have had some, we would throw some covers. Some <laughs> emotional moments. It would have been a, it would have been a wonderful moment. Mile high this club. lady is a hero, and she's being <laughs> scorned and shamed in public. When she's just trying to feed her damn cat. <laughs> well, whoever how, how she is, cat. Flight. can you <laughs> please? Long Not long enough, flight. Kurt. <laughs> so there's your story. You wanted it? We covered Thank it. Thank you. Are we you got happy? It. Yeah. Now let's cover she your LeBron call story. call me. <laughs> now yes. let's cover your LeBron story. Laker, Lakers LeBron James gets Pacers fan ejected and returned from suspension. Which, uh, you know, what a sweetheart of a guy LeBron is. Uh, this is a New York Post story. LeBron James just can't stop getting ejected from games. This time, two fans... In his first game back from his one-game suspension for Bloody and Pistons forward Isaiah Stewart LeBron had a couple of Pacers fans ejected from Los Angeles win Wednesday night in Indianapolis. Uh, LeBron uh, brought the referees over to two fans sitting courtside at Gain uh, Bridge Fieldhouse and angrily pointed at them yelling, this one right effing here. The fan, a young man, and a woman were then asked to leave with two minutes and 29 seconds left in overtime when obscene gestures and language come in. Come into it. It cannot be tolerated. There's a difference from cheering for your team and not wanting the other team to win and things I would never say to a fan and they shouldn't say to me. So this is LeBron saying mm -hmm. that. Adam, I'm going to go to you first yeah, since you're well, a diehard LeBron fan. I'm not a diehard LeBron Wait. fan. I do respect greatness. You know, heavy is the head that wears the crown. No disputing there. Okay, yeah. so no you know, the He's people a top that five don't, best top, player of all time. Top two. Okay, I got Jordan and LeBron. I got him. And then maybe you got Kareem in there. That's me. But in my opinion, I don't Tell even know. the story with Sabonis. I mean, you would have him in your top. Arbita Sabonis, greatest passing go big man keep, of all keep, time. Keep, Thank keep you for going. that jersey. But here's the deal. How many, LeBron gets hated on. So, like, How much shit do you think is talked to LeBron from the stands every single game? Yeah. The fact that he ran up on these two people courtside, yeah. pointed them out, and yeah. full on these two, these two. Yeah. How bad of what. How bad was it what they actually Can said? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay, here's a question for you. All right. So uh, how much of it is self How much of it is self-inflicted? How okay. much of it is just fans being fans? I mean, I've been to games where you're hearing people calling out fans nonstop in the ugliest ways, right? So, one, how often do you hear a story like this about Steph Curry? You don't. How often do you hear stories like this about mm -hmm. Mike Trout? You don't. He's um, he's the best player yeah. in MLB. How many times do you hear stories like this about, I don't know, pick the name of whatever. How many times have you heard the story like this about Ronaldo? How many times have you story, heard, heard the story like this about 
pick any of these stories. Sure. Okay. Yep. So then here's what the next thing I say to you is: in the last forty, how are you? 40, uh, 40. 40 years old. Okay, about to be forty-one uh, mm-hmm. on February fourth, which Thank you, like forty-one-ish, but forty right now. So how many times in the last thirty years of watching basketball? You've been watching basketball for yeah. how long? Thirty years. My whole life. Last 30 years, who have been the face of the league last 30 years? Is it Jordan, Kobe, and Shaq, and maybe LeBron? You had, you had uh, since the 80s, you had Bird and, and Magic, for okay. sure. Then Jordan yep. took over. Yep. Then you had Kobe, Shaq. Okay. Allen Iverson was the face of the league for a quick for a, They didn't want him to be the oh, face of the league. Yeah. But he was, yeah. He didn't they, want to practice. That was a problem. So yeah. We're he, talking about practice? Yeah. So, but go Jules. to it. So, uh, and then you had some Dirk for a hot minute. You had some, you know, uh, the Heatles. Dirk was never the face of the league. Dirk just won a championship. For a hot minute. No, no, I agree. Year. I agree. He, t- he was an underdog, won the for, championship. For, uh, they, I, 2011. I, him, I, I yeah. love what he did league, when yes. they were making fun of him choking. Garnett, but Garnett, Garnett maybe. Not really. Not really. Not, so here's the point. The league. Guys, okay. we're not going to debate yeah. this freaking Dirk <laughs> being the face of the league. Holy <laughs> <laughs> shit. I'm, Nick Van Axel's the face of the league. Freaking Sadell Treat is the face of the league. All right, come back here. So here's the question. I wouldn't vote for Trump. <laughs> Best meme, by the way, by yeah. the people. Here's Kim a question Jong-un, for you. Yeah. Which face of the league have you ever seen go up to a reference to take these two, take these two guys out? Okay, well, let's just get right I to the heart the of the I know the comments, what's been said. Let's just say what the comment was. Which, who said that that was said? Well, listen, okay, at some point you're just going to have to believe what. Do you think, okay. Even let, if. Uh, let even me, if, let me even just if. get this off my chest. Yeah. Allegedly. The couple, and then it was the girl that gave the, like the little pouty Mur. face. Mur. 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 She said, "I hope your son, Bronny James, dies in a car accident. Good luck shooting your free throws, buddy." So what? Okay, but at some point, you, you think- as a father, you as a father of two kids, at some point, you suck. Fuck you. Doesn't just rolls off your back. You, st- you Dude, now you want my kid to die in a car accident? Dude, at he's, some he's point, he's heard it so many times, Adam. And the okay, worst, hold the on. Worst hear thing me out. He hear did. me out. At some point, though. At some point, people have to learn. Dude. Like some of the like the comments that people make online, and they yeah. just go their little keyboard warriors, and they just sure. go off to regular, you know, normal work, and they just blaspheme whoever they want. At some point, you have to pay a price Sticks for talking and shit. and stones may break my bones, but he's worth a billion dollars. So the freaking so he can't have feelings. No, he's not a he's human got, anymore. But the thing is, he's this. a robot. Oh, don't, he's a poor, robot. Poor, poor LeBron. I hope he recovers. The thing about him is now everybody in the world knows he's listening to what's being said. Right. He just made it a thousand percent worse on himself that every chirp that he's always heard now people know he's hearing him. He's listening to him. It's the worst well, thing. I got news for done. you, buddy. People got ears, and if I say, "Hey, Kurt, you're an absolute piece of shit," you're gonna be like, yeah, bro, right here I, in front of you, bro. Dude, like, what do you on, want to on an infinitesimally, you know saying, like, we all have years. We're all human. On an infinitesimally smaller scale, I played minor league baseball, 10,000 people. Hold right? on, no, on this an is infinitesimally a big, you, smaller LeBron, scale. You, LeBron, you in the minor leagues, no, you, big hear, you hear everything they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> you hear everything they're saying. Satoshi Nakamoto's Jesus no, 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 and you no, and no, LeBron no. played in front of fans. Dude, the same I'm exact thing. I get it. You you heard, when you were sitting on the bench at community college football, you heard what these people were saying about you, bro. You But you have to. And I said these two right here. They got to go. Guys, go, I, got, go. I got, I got, I got something in two minutes. So make okay. your point. Where we my at? point is this: one, you either let it go completely, or two, you're LeBron James, and yeah. you have something funny to say where it's like he won't get in an accident because I can afford drivers, like or something like that. You, you think that people didn't say this crap to Kobe? You think they didn't say Spike Lee and Reggie Miller for people that are younger and don't know what it's like to talk shit? Look at what Reggie Miller did with Spike Lee. With the New York Knicks in the playoffs all these years. Spike Lee was saying everything he possibly could. Reggie would hit the three and go right up to him and say, that one's for you, bitch. And that's how you play <laughs> at the highest fine. level. that's fine. I played basketball. You know, I played football. You, you can go talk all Mr. the shit. Mr. Referee, Mr. Referee. All the shit you want. These people have okay. said the most horrifying so, things. So, so here's my question for you. Is there anything that anybody could say that is grounds for dismissal to be kicked out, or anything they could say is fair From game? From the player, is there anything that somebody could say to say sticks All right, and no. stones, bro? Your, so, so your ability, your so ability. Nothing. If they ability, called him the N word, then your, what? If they did that, you would hope that somebody else would take care of it. But if they don't, who cares? It's a word. As soon you're, as soon as they don't say, touch bro. you, as no. soon as they, as soon as they touch you, it's on. But words, LeBron James needs to be protected from words now. Words. It just makes him look soft. I'm not a big basketball fan, but I saw that and was like, ooh. Like, it's, it's just lame. It was not a good it's, look it's for him. I'm not, I'm not saying that he should have well, done it, but I'm saying it, at certain point, it's, it's crossing the line. It shows You're weakness. You're a father. And You're it's going father. to invite more you of get, You get a lot of shit talking to you, yeah. you know, Adam, probably more than you deserve. Do they have a voodoo doll? Could they, could they make something bad happen let's hear to it, the kids? Let's hear it from a father. 
you get a lot of shit comments, stupid shit online. Everyone's tough behind yeah. Twitter. Everyone's tough on YouTube. Sure. They're the toughest people in the world, YouTube commenters. But at some point, if someone says something about Senna, at some point you're going to be like, hold up, what? Like, as a father, how do you respond to this? Okay, so who's, so basic rules. Anyone, anyone's no, fan. That's like, not how life works. It's so, not how so life works. No. How would you interpret if it? If you say it, mm -hmm. This is done. We have a problem mm -hmm. because you are in the circle. Of course. I have a problem with you. You're not going to like it if mm -hmm. you say anything like that to me, if you say it. If a guy off the street says it, what do you want me to do? If a guy off the street says it, I had a couple choices. I can whoop his ass. Mm -hmm. I can get him to make a few calls and make that guy's life a living hell. <laughs> Sammy. Okay. <laughs> I can do all of that. Yeah, of course. And if I do that and I go to jail, then mm -hmm. my kid's not going to see me for two months. So he caused me to lose two months of my daughter's life. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth it. But if somebody on the inside says it, yeah. it is what it is. You know, we can have a problem. Now, let me continue. We have something called Twitter. I don't know if you've been to that website. There's a guy that was running it named Jack, Jack Dorsey. Yeah, 3% he owns though. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it. It's it. So this it. Twitter <laughs> website, you know what things they've said to Obama about Trump? It's insane. About anybody. And yeah. You ever gone and read the comments? It is brutal, yeah. right? Toughest so people in the world on Twitter. if he can't take it, if he can't take it, I mean, buddy. I think, listen, is that the worst comment ever made in the history of no, basketball? not even close. No. How many times do you think people probably called somebody certain words in the 80s, 90s, and Michael still went out there and won the game? So, in Boston, too. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know. All I'm saying to you is, all I'm saying to yes. you is, this sets the precedence that censorship is now going into games and sports. Mm -hmm. Period. You got to sit there and be like... Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I would like? Mm -hmm. I would like. Yeah, I don't like that. So. I, I would like the people that made the comment because yeah. I think they did make this comment to have a conversation. Why don't we invite them? Can we can we see if no, we can get with, a hold of them? With, no, no. With, Let's yeah, invite them okay. to the next podcast. Sure. Can you do that? And just say see how we can would get you justify yeah. saying a comment like this? We'll do that to make you feel uh, uh, good about it, and then we'll go from there. Anyway, they should they should be held accountable hell if they did hell, say that? Exactly. For sure. Totally. But I don't think it's LeBron James who should be the guy sure. that's like, guys. This I is, feel this you is on that. Much. But at some point, <laughs> the shit talkers. By the way, they gotta be this. This is they gotta be. This is where I come from. This is where I come from. Say I'm in a place. Okay. Guy and a girl are fighting. Guy slaps her in the face. In the face. If guy hits a girl? Guy hits a girl oh, in the no, face. unacceptable. What I'm saying to you yeah. is I'm going to do something about okay. it. Okay. So if somebody around them is sitting there, a guy say something like that, I'm going to be like, what, you, what is the freaking matter with you, Like bro? in the stands. I'd like be dude, sitting next yeah. to him and say, what is the matter with I you? I agree. Look, are you freaking stupid? I agree. Like, I would call your ass 100%. out. 100%. We would have a problem. So this is fan what- Fan on fan. Yeah, let the yeah. people handle it. So if people around them didn't say mm -hmm. anything- you know, those, in four. those are the people that are. Uh, <laughs> anyways, hey, uh, we don't have podcast Thursday. I'm in Dallas, but I'm in podcast. Uh, we don't have po next podcast going to be Tuesday. Uh, let's thank Kurt for coming out here. Kurt, you thank you for agree the agree or disagree. Buddy. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, my man. Yes, can I can I just say thanks to the, the value tainers that drove over an hour to see me on Saturday? That was Freaking nuts. Sixty bro. people that the, came inside from four different states. The value tainers, man. Two from Delaware, two from Long Island. That was in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. That was nuts, yeah. man. I love you guys. That was that was really really humbling. That was dope. Thank you so much. You said you had an announcement on Mafia States. No, nah, I mean it's okay. just Mafia States comes out Friday. Yep. Well, that's uh, a pretty uh, big third. announcement, Pat. Three ninety nine <laughs> okay. an episode. We don't get AdSense. You want to order it, do so. There's going to be many short clips. And later on, our strategy, knowing the direction that YouTube is going, this is one thing yeah. that most people don't know about. Uh, last year, we used to uh, get, uh, uh, we were doing a lot of interviews on, uh, what do you call it, vaccines yeah. and all this stuff. We had about 40 to 60 videos that have been taken down well, let, let off me, of let YouTube. Let me comment so, on that because I, I but saw let me your, say th Let me yeah. say this one, and I want to hear you say sure. a couple words on that. We had about 40 to 60 videos taken down. We have a completely different strategy on the direction we're going. Uh, an investment we're making right now on OTT, long term, Mafia States America is going to be one of the projects that is going to be on the OTT. That's the route we're going. So yep. we have to take this route, and AdSense is not going to pay for it. So for some people who are like, you should just put it on YouTube. It's going to make the money back. It's not going to make the money back. We would have easily done that. So having said that, go ahead, Jerome. Yeah, so I, I saw I saw the podcast, the emergency podcast that you did while I was sitting in on, on the plane, man. And that, that was, that very was simple, intense. But they, yeah, they that got was along intense. very well. But then I read the comments, <laughs> and, and I got I to tell I love the value tainers. And I don't think a lot of those people that were making those comments are value tainers because here's the thing. As somebody that's watched every single second and was there for every single second of this thing being shot, there are things that are going to be so newsworthy in this. There, this is history being made, and there is no way YouTube would let it sit. 
I, I, all I can tell you is that there's no way, especially episodes four, five, we and can't six. Can't even tell them what it is. They'll especially know episodes four, the, five, yeah, and six. Last two YouTube, as well, though, with will, the, the last Rudy. one. Last one. Yeah. They. they uh, there's no way YouTube would let this be. You up. think you, YouTube would have taken I, it down? I'm telling you, as, I'm telling you as somebody. Yeah. If people have been following me for years, know I've been shadow banned. You saw it. You didn't believe me, and I showed you it. Oh yeah. What did it look like? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, Charles. exactly. <laughs> so the the. I'm telling you, as somebody that, that's been, if you guys want this to be real, if you want the PBD podcast, you want people like Patrick, Adam, myself to be able to hold a mirror up to the powerful until they cannot help but see what they've become, you guys got to support us in this way. And, that, that, and, and the way that you support us is by giving us the power to have a voice outside of them where they could shut us down. So it's bigger than the product, Pat, to be honest with you. It's a great product, and it stands alone, but it's bigger than that. We need your support so that we can continue speaking truth in this time of heightened sensitivities and heightened censorship. You know, you made a great point, and I will tell you, the true believers of valuetainment, they're all in. Mm -hmm. The true, the messaging and the notes we've gotten and the amount of people that have already ordered it, yeah. they're all in. Friday, release, 8 a.m., first thing in the morning, I can't wait to see those who binge watch all 10 episodes and we follow it. Hashtag Twitter, Mafia States America. On Friday, we will release three of the chapters on Valuetainment so you guys will get a chance to see it. And there's going to be a bunch of short clips free that will be out there. But everything's going to drive back to Mafia States America. You can order all 10 episodes mm -hmm. for $3.99 a pop, which is $39.99. Have a great Sick. week, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll do it again next Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank you.